mad. You know, I get a lot of flack. A lot. And a lot of people get mad at me when I talk. They be hating. And I understand why. Cause I'ma keep it 100, uh Cause I look you in your eyes I tell you truth with no lies I'ma keep it 100, got something to say I look you in your face Then I put you in your place I'ma keep it 100, uh I'm not an OJ's backstabber Just a realist sticking on my facts grabber Oh, I see the fear in the people's eyes That's why I'm breaking down the science on this genocide Listen, they claiming black lives matter, right? Well, I'ma tell you that this bull And I tell you why Cause whenever you hear that set from another side Like a real man But you ain't even got a clue about the real plans Secretly they need to keep them in the fields, man That's why I'm killing the game Cause I'ma keep it 100 on Cause I look you in your eyes I tell you truth and no lies I'ma keep it 100 on Cause I'm a boss If I talk, I'ma walk real talk I'ma keep it 100 on Cause I look you in your eyes I tell you truth and no lies I'ma keep it 100 Got something to say I look you in your face Then I put you in your place I'ma keep it 100 on Racism dead, yo But when we trip about it, say it's in our head, though But then we listen to the news and hear by Freddie Gray I mean, we ducking and dodging and sit like every day I'm real with it, yeah, mentally we sodomize It's cause our history books straight up and modified They wanna take us out and bulk it, call it Columbine No reparations and they won't even apologize I'm trying to tell you that these crackers got a lot to hide Create fantasy and cover it with a lot of lies I'm telling y'all that the prison system been prophesized It's about that paper slavery, make up the bottom line you believe in this paradise I tell the truth, the truth is something you will never like never. But once it get in your brain, you'll never be the same That's why I'm killing the game Cause I'ma keep it 100, uh Cause I look you in your eyes As I tell you truth for no lies I'ma keep it 100, uh Cause I'm a boss If I talk, I'ma walk real talk I'ma keep it 100, uh Cause I look you in your eyes As I tell you truth for no lies I'ma keep it 100, got something to say I look you in your face, then I put you in your place I'ma keep it 100 Look like we savage, right? We bust it up and get a new sign to talk about. But then you wanna get mad at me when I call it out. You want the truth, but it seems like you can't handle the truth. How people fuck but you want everything handed to you. I swear to God, I'm not really understanding the guys. They got it good, but won't step in your parents too. I tell them, Negro, you really need to check your ego. Cause your unwillingness to do it, destroying our people. You see, I'm keeping it real, it ain't about the fame. That's why I'm killing the game, cause I'ma keep it going, honey. Cause I look you in your eyes As I tell you truth with no lies I'ma keep it 100, uh Cause I'm a boss If I talk, I'ma rock real talk I'ma keep it 100, uh Cause I look you in your eyes As I tell you truth with no lies I'ma keep it 100, got something to say I look you in your face Then I put you in your place I'ma keep it 100 Yeah, 100 100, 100, I'ma keep it 100 I'ma do it Y'all ain't ready Yo, I'ma Open your eyes, see the games they running Better believe they got dudes they coming I'm a revolutionary 
Revolution ever since I don't tell nobody Cause, cause, cause I be on that bridge I, 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 I be on that knowledge I be on that bridge I be on that college Maybe don't I'm drinking Maybe don't I'm wild Cause I be on that bridge I be on that bridge Radiation for cancer patients They silently killing you while you were sleeping They pump you with more and they why you sedated Food that you eat is contaminated You killing yourself at the moment you ate it Conspiracy theories that I be so privy to give you these lyrics That's highly debated How could you hate it? How could you fake it? Ooh, I'm glad I'm not one of you The truth is in front of you Get you decided no turning your back So how do I come at you? How do I teach you? Grab your attention and program your mind for massive inventions Wait the fuck up You out of dimensions to liquid your soul from out of his prisons Yes, he's the enemy Of course you know he likes a division White against black and black against white it's all on television You need to make a decision Cause freedom of spirit is why you were living You need to be careful He's coming for you, your wife and your children You think it's a game, don't you? You thinking these devils are playing, don't you? You think I'm insane, don't you? You thinking I'm sick in my brain, don't you? Well, I go hunt in secrecy like the Illuminati To tell the truth, now who gon' stop me? Cause I be on that real shit I be, I be on that knowledge I be, I be on that real shit I be on that galaxy Baby, don't I'm drinking Been revealed to me. You been living in Madrid, you confusing me. I got a different set of eyes that I used to see. Red pill, blue pill, need that true pill. Some of y'all just can't stand how true feels. Smoke and mirrors be the hope that kills you, but illusion is the fake and ill. The criminal activity, illegal captivity. Of the individuals be lacking identity. Black, no liberty, justice for some. Lack pure unity, trust them is none. Faith without works is dead as a donut. I gotta get dirty, go up against the whole mind to the abyss. It's no problem, ain't shit to lose. I am a god, y'all talk about. Turn the other cheek, but he turn to sleep and take you out the game. You gangsta, when you killing your kind, but against the grain, you Legally blind, just keep in mind when you turn your back, you still can't keep looking straight ahead. Cause these obstacles in front of you will make you turn around and then face your fears. You better live your purpose, live your dreams, free your mind and free your seed. Hear your heart, hear your soul, force your speech and take that lead. Your people sleeping it's so deep. Wake them up to make them free, then call on me and maybe you can see. I be on that real shit, I be on that knowledge, I be on that real I can't get on that galaxy, maybe don't I'm drinking. It's the High Powered Podcast. 
lit conversations, debates, and advice that keep you turned up. What's up, YouTube? What's up? I know I'm late. Forgive me. It's 928. I was supposed to have my ass here at 10 o'clock. But I ain't, I wasn't here at 10 o'clock. I wasn't here. I mean, I was supposed to be here at 9. I was supposed to be here at 9. But I'm not the type of person to come up with excuses. And this is not an excuse for me being late. It is what the fuck it is. Okay? It's the truth. I got some rudy ass, loud ass neighbors upstairs. Right? So I was sitting here trying to get my show and stuff prepped. And then guess what happened? These loud ass motherfuckers with their goddamn uh, rug rack kids. They start doing all that damn noise that they've been doing for the last fucking week. So I go up there. This is the third time I done went up there. Third time I go up there and I knock on the door. And then this heifer come out with an attitude. She come out. I could have swore. It was how to survive in South Central. I swear when, I, when she opened the door, I thought. I was in Boys in the Hood because she opened the door with a cigarette and a moo moo on. Okay? And she gonna get an attitude with me, y'all. She gonna start cussing me out and calling me names and telling me that she gonna come and put hands on me. And then the bitch gonna call the police. This is all before the show supposed to start. This is all before the show supposed to start. This heifer called the police and I said call him. And I stood right there while her lying fat ass called him. Bitch, I hope you find me on YouTube. Because I told you I record. I hope you find me so you can see how much shit I'm talking about your fat ass. Now, uh, look. She going to call the police. Right. And then she going to lie to the police while I'm standing there. <laughs> I said it don't matter. Call them. You know why I don't care? Because let me tell you something. The police have been to my house about three times for different reasons. Now, if y'all have looked at my previous show, A Deadly Lesson, where I was talking about I had a friend of mine staying with me. Right. He's passed away now. He died. OK, and that's what the show was about. Well, the police had came to my house at that time and they almost broke my damn door down because his ass going to call the ambulance. And instead of telling them to go knock on my window, he had basically had him try to break my damn door down to get to him because he can't get up and go answer the door. And he didn't call. The he didn't call the ambulance. So they didn't have the damn constable at my house. The ambulance, you know, EMS and the motherfucking fire department, all of them out there. Trying to break my damn door down. <laughs> no lie. Right? So the constable, his name, his name was Paul. Right? And he came, so Paul know me. And a couple of them other constables know me. Right? Paul was a little sweet on me. Right? I think he got mad at me because I had never called him back. But I'd be busy. All right, I'd be real busy. But Paul kind of got mad because I ain't never called him back or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, Paul know me. Bitch, call the police. Call the police. Because they're going to find out who is telling the truth and who lying. Okay? And your ass is lying. Then she, listen, y'all, let me tell you something. YouTube. Let me tell you something, YouTube. Y'all know I'm on woman, women's empowerment now. Y'all know I'm on my women's empowerment trip right now. But that bitch made me go back to red pill. That, made, that bitch made me hop on red pill side. You know why? Because she come out there with a goddamn cigarette in the nastiest attitude of all. Right. I told you it was how to survive in South Central when I knocked on her door and she come out there with a little rug rats behind her. 
And she looked like she just got finished eating a whole box of Twinkies. Okay? A whole box of goddamn Twinkies. And then she started cussing me out and shit, right? Then she gonna have a nerve to say, and you need to go get your braces fixed. It's a damn shame you 40 years old with braces. And I said, it's a goddamn shame you got them twins hanging over your goddamn abdomen like that. You need to go to the gym. You know, it's right there. We stay right next to the gym. It's a damn shame you ain't using that motherfucker. <laughs> well, I got a man <laughs> and he love it. Girl, you got a hobosexual because ain't no high value man. I'm, I'm red pill now, bitch. Ain't no high value man. Bitch, you are average at best. You ain't even average. You average. You below average at best. Below average at best. Then she was on the phone, y'all. She was on the phone. Talking to her mammy. That's right, I said mammy. I didn't say mama, I said mammy. She was talking to her goddamn mammy. And she the one causing all the goddamn problems. And then her mammy going to act like her child is the benevolent one. Why are you talking to that lady? Don't let her disturb your peace. Bitch, what you talking about disturb the peace? She the one with up here with all these goddamn rug rats. Then she going to tell me when I tell her, I said, your kids is doing all this running around. All I hear is boom, 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 boom down here. She going to lie and say, my kids was in the bed. Ain't nobody moving around. I said, dude, well, is it your, is it your dog? No, my dog is in the cage. Well, bitch, I you not going to play me for Willie Foo Foo. Did she say, well, I'm big. Bitch, I can see that. You look like fucking Godzilla. I can see that. But this damn tumbling that's going on in here. That ain't your Godzilla ass walking around here one foot at a time, ma'am. Right? Then she gonna talk about she gonna put hands on me. I said, you, come on. I said, you bold. That's what you want me to do. No, that's what you want to do. And I'm gonna tell you one thing. I don't back down from challenges. Right? I'm not scared. If you gonna put your hands on me, then bring your ass. This is what was all going on while y'all sitting up here wondering why the show ain't started. <laughs> That's why the show ain't started, because this bitch is up here with the police in my house. <laughs> and she doing all that talking. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, bitch. If you going to do it, stop talking and bring your ass on out here. I don't want to hear that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Fuck all that. If you bold, you bold, bring your ass. I'm standing right here. I ain't went nowhere. And ain't going to go nowhere. Mama, you better come. You better come before I, I finna put hands on this bitch. Girl, you doing all that motherfucking talking, trying to make it seem like you tough. Bitch, I'm standing right here. Just put the motherfucking phone down and bring your ass. Right? But that's what was going on. That was what was going on. Then the cops walk in my house. I was on TikTok. I didn't even turn the TikTok off. Okay, I did not even turn the TikTok off. So TikTok was listening to this shit. <laughs> they heard the police. On <laughs> yeah, she called. Yes, she called her motherfucking mama. Bitch, what you calling your mama for? What you calling your mama for? What the fuck is she going to do? What is she going to do? And then you going to lie. Now look at me. Look at me. I go to the door like this. I go to the door like this. You go to the door with 22, 25 inch braided weave down to your motherfucking toenails. Mm -hmm. A cigarette and a moo moo. And with some hoodlum, hoodlum kids behind you. Ma'am, who you think they gonna believe? 
Who you think they gonna believe is the problem? I'm for real. They come in my place. It ain't nothing but peace and quiet, and they see all my camera equipment in here. Who the fuck you think they gonna believe? And when they walk up in here, I can promise you maybe, you know, you know, the first cop that walked in here, his dick might got a little bit hard. Bitch, ain't nobody dick getting hard for you. Talking about my man. He love it. Ma'am, that is a hobosexual. And, and clearly, you don't understand men, and they'll fuck anything, and they'll just fuck you, making you feel like, you know, you want it. But, girl, he, got, he needs somewhere to lay his head. You are a cum dumpster plus a hotel, okay? You are a hotel room and a cum dumpster. You are not a high-value woman that any high-value man. I'm red pill tonight. God damn it. Okay? Right? Yeah, she do need to be listening so she can come knock on my door. And I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to just mollywop that motherfucker. I ain't going to say nothing. You come talking that shit to me, I'm going to just mollywop your ass. Anyway, now on to our regularly scheduled program. They didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't fuck the whole damn thing up. You know, I was not going, I was not going to come in here with this. this. I was planning on, I was planning on pre-recording this show, but I couldn't get it pre-recorded because they was making so much goddamn noise. Right? So I had to do it live. And I didn't plan on 20 minutes of this live going to today's ass, right? But it is what it is. It is what the fuck it is. So now we gonna go back to what the hell we was supposed to be talking about. We're supposed to be talking about. Forgive me if this show is not in order like I originally intended for it to be. Because I'm still a little bit discombobulated. It's cool. Y'all just going to have to bear with me. Bear with me for a little bit. Okay? And so I can get all of the shit in, in order to talk about. Okay? All right? So, um... What I want to talk about is that article that went around. I want to talk about this damn article that was going around that everybody was talking about. Now, I ain't tripping about the art article. Look, TikTok. If you, if you on TikTok, I don't, I don't like to do my TikToks and my YouTubes at the same time. But make sure you go over to YouTube. I'm going to turn TikTok off. My YouTube is the High Power Podcast because I'm probably going to need to use my phone. I am going to use it because I have people calling in and, and, and talking to us and everything. So I'm going to end this. Go to YouTube and watch it. It is the High Power Podcast. I'm going to be putting some stuff on the screen. So I'm going to see y'all when you get over there. All right. Peace out, TikTok. And thank y'all for listening to that, that whole fiasco. Keeping me company. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now. Okay. So the, the, the most popular thing that's been going around uh, lately is this single lonely men article, right? That's on the rise. Well, it's not new to me. Because if you know me and if you have listened to any of my shows, y'all know I've been talking about this. I've been talking about this for quite a while, right? And articles like this have been out for more than a year, maybe even two. So what I want to do is pull up some of these articles, okay, in addition to the one that everyone is talking about. And then we're going to go through the psychology of a very popular um video that is out not so much popular but it is a popular gentleman he actually had me on his show uncle phil phil scott phil scott had me on his show 
um, to talk about a video that I had put out on TikTok that got some traction. And that video was uh, men have an issue with paying child support because they ain't getting the pussy no more. That was that. Was that okay? Well, um, he actually came out with something else. And we are going to break that down, break down the psychology of that, okay? I'm getting out of red pill mode, and I'm going back into woman empowerment mode. But she don't qualify for women's empowerment. I just want, to, want you to understand that the lady that lives above me on the second floor, she does not qualify for women's empowerment. She qualifies for red pill torturing, okay? That's what she qualifies for. But I'm going to hop off of that and go back into women's empowerment for all of y'all, okay? She's excluded. I just want you to know that, okay? Uh, so we don't get it twisted and confused that I'm... She not a part of this. Okay. Anyway, single lonely men on the rise. Okay. This is one of the articles that everybody talking about. Dating opportunities for heterosexual men are diminishing as relationship standards rise. Men represent approximately 62% of dating app users, lowering their chances for matches. And then men need to address skill deficits to meet healthier relationship expectations. Now, this is real interesting that that, that is an article that went viral because articles have been out here for a while now about it being real hard for men. I mean, real hard for men. I'm going to pull up some of these articles so that you can see. There is another article out there about men trying to date 60, around the age of 65 and older. They want to move in with women and women don't want to move in with them. Wait a minute. Winter is coming. They said winter is coming. What you mean? The 65-year-old men dating, men trying to date at 65 and older want to move in with women, but these same women that's around their age don't want to move in with them? Well, let me go ahead and pull that up so you can see that article. We'll read that real quick. And we are going to definitely go through Uncle Phil's last video that he talked about. He pulled up this chick talking about black men are in the nursing home around 40 years old. But he ain't the only one that said that. Or she ain't the only one that said it. it was another lady who works in the nursing home or work. No, she worked in the stroke ward. This woman works in the stroke ward. And she was like, these men that are in the stroke ward are between the ages of 45, okay, and like 60. Black men are going into the hospital at 40-some years old. Baby, do you understand I'm 36? Four years from now, I'll be 40. Right? So we're talking about men that are only nine years older than me already going into the stroke ward and nursing home. Right? So let's see. Oh, boy. Here we go. This article here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it around so you can see it. There it is. You see that? It says, I don't know why. Take me off of, the, take me off of there. I don't need y'all to see me right there. Now. What it say? The new reality of dating over 65. Men want to live together and women do not. Men want to live together, but women don't. We got 106 people in the building. Turn it up. Get the likes up. We got 51 likes. Come on, get some more likes up. New reality, dating over 65. Well, let me read that to you. Let me read that to you. Since women going to be lonely and cat ladies, let's read the real reality. Forget what these dudes out here talking about to try to get into your head. 
so that you can lower your standards so they can attach themselves to you to save their life. Let's see the real reality. Who need to learn? Who need to, who need to get some kitty litter? Who need to get some kitty litter? This article was written in 2019, ladies. The new popular article was just written a week ago that everybody just hopped on. But this article was written in 2019 and updated July 11, 2022. Antonio de Alfonso, 66, is a believer in marriage. He wed three times and was hoping for a fourth go. He's been married three times and looking for the fourth. Well, that's interesting, ladies. You know why? Because there's an attorney on TikTok. He is an attorney. And he has a video telling women how to protect their children's inheritance in the case that she dies first. You know why? He says, as an attorney, what he has seen as a reality is that men are usually in a serious relationship or married again within two years of the wife dying. Men hop from relationship to relationship because they need women. He said, but women typically don't remarry or, or even want to remarry. But men hop in relationships after relationships because there is a need there. But they'll tell you marriage don't benefit men. Yet here you go, this 66 year old looking for a fourth marriage after he done burnt three of them. Right. For more than a decade, D. Alfonso, a Montreal writer, has been dating a Toronto widow. The two see each other every couple of months. D. Alfonso wanted more. He proposed five times only to be rebuffed with every try. The woman turned his ass down five times. But let them tell it. Marriage benefits women and women just dying to marry them. This woman that turned his ass down five times. The older woman refused to live with him. She refused to live with him. D. Alfonso said because she wanted to travel and be free. Uh, painting a completely different narrative, ladies. Men are trying to tell you you're going to be lonely. But women prefer freedom. Ain't nothing lonely about freedom, baby. He said, I say, I have to ask. And I always ask, so what do you want from me, he said. The pair took to a two-year hiatus, during which D. Alfonso tried dating other senior age women. Why are they dating senior age women? Because... Ladies, men told you that don't no man want you after you hit 30 years old. Don't no man want you past 30. Why is he looking for a senior woman? The reason why he's looking for a senior woman because these guys believe that senior women are desperate and just want to be married and want to be picked. I teach my people on TikTok this. Every single reason that a man is approaching you is because he wants something from you. There is no such thing as an undesirable woman. Every single woman is desired for a reason which is to be used by a man. These men are not approaching you because they want to love you. They're not approaching you because they like you. They are approaching you because you have something that they want to use. And for him, he has recognized that his mortality is on the way. And he realizes that he's lonely and he feels like women his age are just as lonely as him when it's actually not the case. Women prefer their freedom. Women prefer to be around cats, sir, if they gonna have a cat. But a lot of these women like to be traveling. They love their freedom and they do not want to cater to you. 66 year old uh, Antonio de Alfonso. 
It is 2022 now. De Alfonso was 66 then. 19, 20, 22, 21, 22. That's three. He's 69 now. Should be going on 70. He proposed five times. Did he propose five times when he was 25? Did he propose when he was 30? Did he propose when he was 40? No, he waited till he was 66 to propose five times to a woman that was around his same age bracket. The women that they think are desperate and just want to be attached to a man. Right. I really believe that women no longer need men whatsoever. They never needed you, sir. Women never needed men. But the laws that men implemented and created forced women to need them artificially. Now that those artificial measures are not in place, the nature of man and woman is coming to the goddamn forefront. The nature of man and woman is coming to the forefront. I really believe that women no longer need men whatsoever, D. Alfonso said. I am totally irrelevant. This article was in 19, 2019, y'all. Men realize that they are irrelevant. They realize that they have no value. This is the reason why they want to keep you out of the work f workforce. This is the reason why they have the boys club and want to keep you out. Because if you are working, ladies, men need artificial means to feel relevant without money, which is an which is an artificial means. Without cars, without rap music and stuff like that. These are all artificial without these external things. They would have no value, so they must keep you out to continue to feel relevant in some way, shape, or form or fashion. This is why they made you, in, made you dependent completely on them financially, which are what? Artificial means. Because in natural means, when you start talking about natural means, all women need are resources. That's all women need is resources. And when she has resources by her own, she does not need men for much of anything. Right? Nothing but some wang wang. Nothing but some Peter Wacker. And that's only five minutes worth of five wor minutes worth of need. And that really ain't even a need. Because they got the rose now. And the rose do a much better job than Peter Wacker. Anyway. D. Alfonso push and pull with his partner's reflex, a rift emerging between single women older than 65 and men they date. Increasingly, these men are encountering resistance from older women who want their own lives, not a full time relationship. Ladies, this was back in 2019, barely after Kevin Samuels came out with talking that mess. Women and older, they want a peace. But they are trying to project their own insecurities and their own fears onto you and try to convince you that their fears are your fears. And they are not. While many in this generation of heterosexual, divorced, and widowed women want male companionship, they don't necessarily relish the thought of moving in with a man. Y'all hear how quiet it is in my apartment? You see that drama that I just went through? I don't want, I don't want no live-in drama. I got upstairs drama. I don't want no live-in drama. Right? But men want that. Men want, men want company. Right? And they want to use you for that company. Oh, we're going in tonight. Oh, we are going to end tonight, right? That's why I say that article that y'all just hopped on, 
That ain't nothing new. Y'all just are being made aware of it because the universe has aligned with everybody starting to see and feel something similar. But baby, this has been out. Men have been on the decline. Right. And they in denial. Men are delusional right now. Right. Very delusional. So let's continue. Today, say researchers study this cohort, more older women are rejecting the downsides of the live in relationship. The codependence, the daily tension within close quarters and the sacrifices made keeping a home, caregiving and doing the emotional legwork to keep their unions humming. Some of these women completely forego dating while others opt for live living apart together. L.A.T. arrangements in which partners in committed relationships choose to keep separate residences. That's the type of shit that I'm on. If I ever deal with another dude in any type of, I am not living with him. He will not be living with me. You're going to have your own place and I'm going to have my own place because I'm not cleaning up behind you. You ain't got to pay my bills. I'm going to pay 100% of all my bills, right? Because the only reason that I would be dealing with you at this time is because we are compatible and we companions. But to live with you, absolutely not because I will not be taking care of a grown child. But they want to convince you that they are the prize, ladies. They want to convince you that they are the prize when they are nothing more than burdens. And I'm going to show you that that's what they want. I'm going to show you that's exactly what they want. And it's coming out their own mouth. Right? This has been out, ladies. More than 68% of seniors residing alone in 2016 were women. More than 68% of seniors residing alone in 2016 were women, according to the latest census data from Statistics Canada. Widowhood, widowhood used to count for much of this gender, uh, this gender disparity with women often outliving men. Widowhood used to count for much of this gender disparity with women often outliving men. So, ladies, there is no reason that you should even buck or bat an eye when a dude tells you that you're going to die alone. There's no reason because women often outlive men. So when he's gone, you still kicking. The only person that need to be concerned about having somebody by his bedside is a guy, not you. Because this is something that we deal with often and we always have our family and friends around. He ain't got no family, no friends. You know why? Because he abandoned his kids. He abandoned his kids. He was bros before hoes and his bros didn't care about him at all. Right? Because men are wired to compete against each other. They are not wired for communion. Women are communion based. Communion is in women's nature. It ain't in men's nature. That's why they lonely. It ain't your fault, ladies. You're going to have to let a man live his lonely existence. That's his life. That's his. That's the cards he was dealt. That's on him. Right. Now, divorce is driving the trend. The share of separated or divorced seniors living alone more than tripled between 1981 and 2016. According to the agency, increasingly it is, the pers it is personal choice, not death, but personal choice that sees senior age women going it alone. Women choose to live alone, but they trying to criticize you as if it's no man wants you. Right. That men are leaving you when the majority of these women are choosing to walk away and live in peace. That's what's happening. That's the data. That's the statistics that they want to skew with talking points. Right. So. 
with 72% reporting they were highly satisfied living on their own. 72% of women that live alone, older age women, say they are highly satisfied. Living on their own, according to data from the 2017 General Social Survey. Today, this reticence to cohabitate is driving a wedge between the sexes. Many older heterosexual men still prefer living with a partner. It is men that want to live with you after they, after they have exhausted all of their youth, but they want to tell you that you didn't hit the wall when it's really them that hit the wall, when really winter is coming for them. But they want to convince you that it's coming for you. So that way you can lower your standards and give them what they want out of you. Huh. Not no more, ladies. Priscilla, the queen maker, that's what they call me, Pastor P, the queen maker. The queen maker ain't going to let it happen to you. Follow me, right? Hail Mary, run quick see. What do we have here now? Do you want to ride or die? Ride or die, 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 die. Follow me, right? And you ain't got to worry about what the hell they talking about? Let them, let them do whatever they going to do. Because statistics are showing you, ladies, that you are right. You are okay all over the globe in your own space. They need to convince you that you ain't so that you can keep them company. And let them, let them suck on your energy for nothing. Right? So anyway, let's continue. Many older heterosexual men still prefer living with a partner. Among senior solo dwellers, men were significantly more likely than women to say they intended to marry or form a common law union in the future. They want to marry you. Why? They want to marry you. Why? They don't want to marry you because they love you. They don't want to marry you because they like you. When he was 25, he didn't want to marry. When he was 35, he didn't want to marry. When he was 40, he didn't want to marry. Because when he was 25, 35, and 40, he'd been talking about this red pill shit, listening to Andrew Tate talking about marriage don't benefit men. But all of a sudden, now you want to marry, huh? You want to marry when you get old. Why? Why? Hmm. Men were significantly more likely than women to say they intended to marry or form a common law union in the future. According to the authors of a 2019 report from Statistics Canada, in heterosexual relationships where partners over the age of 65 lived apart, men often assumed they or their girlfriends would move in eventually while women clung to the solo arrangement enjoying their free time without responsibility for others. This according to in-depth interviews conducted in 2013 by University of Victoria sociology professor Karen uh, Kobayashi and Laura Funk, now an associate professor of sociology at the University of Manitoba. For a generation of older men, traditional live-in relationships remain important because female partners meet so many of their social, emotional, health, and domestic needs, said Sharon Hyman, a Montreal filmmaker who's interviewed hundreds of couples for her upcoming documentary called A Partners, Living Happily Ever Apart. Women have wider circles of friends. Men don't, so they are relying on women for more, Hyman said. For men, often we hear it's not as easy for them to be on their own. Ladies, stop letting these men convince you that loneliness is your goddamn problem. Loneliness is his motherfucking problem. Loneliness is his problem. And I'm telling you, do not adopt the mentality. 
of coming to save them from their own fate. Men spend all this time disrespecting you. They spend all of this time trashing your name, trashing your very essence, only to need you more than you need him. They will bend the knee. They talking about they ain't no simps, but they going to become simps over the next five to ten years. Because they need you. It's wired in them to need you. Well, we going to leave and go overseas. Well, go, sir. Go be somebody else's problem. A number of social factors have sent women 65 plus hurtling toward independent lives. Chief among them financial independence said David Kravitz, author of The New Old, How the Boomers Are Changing Everything Again. They've had careers. They're liberated and they're not dependent on the guy, Kravitz said. When they hit this age, they're not going to revert back to being their mothers and their grandmothers. Older women are forging the kind of partnerships they want because society now allows different kinds of relationships, said Dr. Helen Fisher, a senior research fellow of Indiana's Kinsey Institute. Fisher, 74, lives separately from her partner of five years, calling it a blessing. I've got a whole social network. I like to go to the theater, the symphony, and the various lectures with friends. Fisher said he's welcome to come if he wants to. Fisher spends three nights at her apartment in New York and the rest at her part uh, at her partner's home. By this stage of their lives, they've become accumulated. They both accumulated too much stuff to cram into one residence. She has an office at his house and he gets half of a closet at her apartment. It's almost like a continual courtship. Fisher said the little things don't bother you because you can go home. Many women resist moving in with men because they pre they remember previous marriages and unequal division of labor at home. I keep telling y'all that marriage is slavery. Marriage is a slave labor position for women. This is all over the globe, not just in America, because this article right here is from Canada. All over the globe. I mean, I got articles from God dog on um, Australia. I have articles from Africa. I got articles all over the place. Women are experiencing the same exact thing and they have the same exact feelings all over the globe. Do not let men convince you that loneliness is your problem. It's not your problem. And I'm going to tell you to stop listening to what they say because what they're saying is manipulation so that they can convince you to let them suck on you for their own survival. You ain't to give two dams about their survival. If they don't care about your well-being, you ain't to care about theirs because they need you more than you need them. Period. Many women resist moving in with them. Let's see. Let's see. Um, where, are I going? where am I at? Where am I at? Having a place of their own, she said, offers senior age women time to rest, think and pursue their interests instead of feeling exhausted by the chore wars. They want to have their own place in their own way, said DePaolo, an academic associate in social psychology at the University of California, Santa Barbara. When a guy chats up 77-year-old Montrella Rhonda Nadell, 77, they say you ain't desirable no more after 30. But why, well then why is a guy hitting up a 77-year-old woman then? Why is a guy hitting up a 77-year-old woman at her tennis club? Her brain quickly fast forwards. Dinner dates will turn into a relationship, which will inevitably find Nadell cooking, cleaning, and eventually caregiving for the elderly gentleman. There is no such thing as 
an undesirable woman because all of these men desire to use you for something. They desire to use the 18 year old to get his sexual needs met and his ego needs boosted. But when he gets older, he wants somebody to care give. He know that that young chick ain't going to care give, but she can give him a ride, a, a have fun or whatever. But once he get older, he needs somebody that's going to care give. Who you think he going to start trying to approach then? A woman that he think is desperate. Right. And they're going to approach the ones that they think are lonely that don't know but they think women want men as much as men want women and that ain't the goddamn case it's just not i don't want to take care of anybody i want to take care of me said nadelle who divorced her second husband two decades ago she divorced him he didn't divorce her she divorced him you want to be friends and get together. When I, when I say it's okay to get together, fine. But to be in a relationship where I have to answer to somebody else, been there, done that, don't want to do it again. She's 77. I'm 36 and I'm telling you I don't want to do it again. She's 77. So you're going to tell the 77-year-old it's just the man you picked? It's just the one you chose? I'm 36 I'm saying the same thing. You got 25-year-olds saying the same thing. Who lives in the world of delusion? Men live in the world of delusion, not women. Men do. And they want to convince you that their delusional world is realistic. The key trait of a narcissistic person is visions of grandeur and delusions. Delusions of grandeur. That is the key identifier of a narcissistic personality type of person. The majority of men regurgitating this stuff live in delusional land because the real world says men need women more than women need men. As the solo dwellers age, the question becomes what happens when they grow frail and need someone to lean on. DePaulo argued that those who live alone often maintain broader networks of support than married couples do. Pointing to a raft of international research, international research, not just national, but international. That means globally. That means global research. Partners who live separately for some portion of the week still tend to each other in sickness and are well positioned as caregivers because we have our own place to recharge our batteries and avoid the all too frequent caretaker burnout, said Hyman, 57, who has lived away from her partner for 20 years. Even so, many senior age men struggle living alone. Ladies, listen to me. Many senior age men struggle living alone. When you listen to these podcasts and them keep telling you you're going to live alone, you need to start hearing it as projection because the truth of the matter is this is an ingrained fear in men. They are afraid. They scared out of their draws about living and dying alone. And they want to make you believe that that's your fear. Even so, Many senior age men struggle living alone, growing lonely because they'd over relied on their spouse. They over rely on women. Women do all the work. So since women are strong in all of these areas because the world puts so much weight on her, she can live alone without fear because she's strong in so many areas. It is her that is creating the social relationships and the social bonds. It is her that is managing the, the emotional relationships and everything. And men leaning on them without building up their strength in any department. Of course he's going to be lonely. 
because he can't call his old friend to come over there and help. Who he going to rely on? He going to rely on you, ladies. But then they'll sit up here and tell you you ain't got no value to no man after 30 years old. Don't let them lie to you. You got so much value in your goddamn pinky finger. You got more value in your pinky finger than they got in their whole body. I don't care how you look. I don't care how old you are, 18 or 77. You got more value in your pinky finger than they got in their whole body. She hopes these realities will change for men as more people delay marriage, reside alone longer, earlier in their lives, and learn how to thrive solo. Montreal de Afonso is slowly coming around to, living up, to the living apart setup. He reunited with a reluctant widow. He reunited with a reluctant widow. Do you understand how much he need a woman? He is not getting with the woman because he likes her. He's not getting with her because he loves her. He's getting with her because his whole life depend on her. He need her. So he going back to a reluctant widow. A widow didn't even want him, but he going back because he, he can't live alone. Right? realizing that although she does not want to live under one roof, she remains committed to the relationship. I had to reevaluate my own prejudice, my fears, my inferiority complex, he said. Today, De Alfonso is reconsidering the message he'd heard from older women who no longer seek the mantle of marriage or domesticity. I think that women are asking that we understand them differently. Yeah, women been asking you to understand. But since you y'all have had since men have had the power and they have been able to control women financially, he felt like he ain't never have to understand her because she depended on him. And so since she depended on him, he felt like he don't need her, but she need him so he could do whatever the hell he want to do. Now that dynamic is gone. And the reality is it's always been men that needed women always and now they at the mercy of women and women ain't going for it no more so either you gonna level up or get on you gonna level up or go to that damn nursing home level up or get on level up or get to that nursing home because ain't nobody gonna turn around and feel sorry for you right let's see what we're saying in the comment section right yeah that's what it is so look now I wanted y'all to hear that. Now we finna go, guess what we finna listen to now? We finna go to Uncle Phil's show, right? Phil Scott. And I want to play this video where he made commentary and I'm gonna make commentary to his commentary. He making commentary to another video but I'm finna make commentary to, to both of their videos. And I'm going to stop it Every second, I want you to hear every single word that come out of his mouth. Ladies, every single word that come out of his mouth and her mouth, I want you to hear it. Because they don't want you because they like you. They don't want you because they value you. They want you because they need you. They want to use you. Now, before I start this, I'm going to pull up the definition of use. Because, you know, ladies, I'm intellectual and I base my stuff on fact. I don't base it on opinion. Right. So I'm going to pull up the definition of use and I'm going to show you I'm pulling up the definition. So you see it. Y'all see it on the screen. You see use. I pulled it up. Now I'm going to read it to you. Use. Take. 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 Not hold. Not, 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 not give. But take. Hold or deploy something as a means of accomplishing a purpose. Take something for the reason or the purpose or for accomplishing a purpose, okay? Take as a means of accomplishing a purpose or achieving a result. Employ, okay? My question is to you, 
take what to accomplish what? To take what to accomplish what? Because that's the definition of use. Okay? When I say that a man, every reason that a man approach you is because he want to use you for something, I mean that. He wants to take something from you to accomplish a purpose or achieve some result that's his, not you. So men want to use you. All of them do. All of them do. Not just a few, all of them. And I can prove it to you. Now, let, now, now, I'm going to play this. Um, I appreciate Phil bringing me on to his show. That was very, that was very uh, gentlemanly-like, and I appreciate being on there, right? So I ain't got no slight against Phil. This ain't about him. This is about the words that's coming out of his mouth, though, right? Because let him tell it. Let Phil tell it. I bet Phil thinks he's an exceptional man. I bet Phil don't think he like no other man. I bet he think he the good man, right? But based on the words that's coming out of his mouth, he just like the rest of them. He's exactly like the rest of them, right? So... Now. are starting to come into the nursing homes at an earlier age let's roll that so i was talking to one of my girlfriends who's actually she owns a um senior uh home and because i you know i really i really want to open one so me and her always talking back and forth about little stuff and she was saying that the population in one of her nursing homes in new york i think she was like it's men between the ages of 47 to like 58. all right let's stop there 47 to 58. The age is 47 to 58. Okay? That's young. That's young. I'm 36. Okay? 47? That means it was born in about 74 years, 1974. That's not old. Let's keep going. And some like what you said in the comments. And I was like, I wonder why she said a lot of them never took care of their kids. So they end up getting real sick, um, stroke, heart attacks or whatever, and they can't function. So they had to go to nursing homes because they didn't do right. Let me stop right there. This is why you need to be a good father. All right. Let's stop right there. He, he said, he said, let's stop right there. And I'm saying, let's stop after he say his first thing. What am I, what, why am I stopping him? Because he said, that's why. See, this is why, explaining the reason why a man need to be in his kid's life. He ain't telling these people to be in their kid's life because you want to see your child become the best version of themselves. You want your child to have the best opportunity by having a father that cares about them there. That's not why you're telling them to be a part of their kids' lives. You're telling them that this is the reason why you need to be a part of your kids' life so that they can have an insurance policy, right? Because the woman say, they didn't take care of their kids. They didn't do. They got sick and now they in a nursing home. And then you say this is why you need to be in your kid's life. So that way when you get sick, at least since you was there, your kids will come back and look after you. It's selfish. It ain't got a damn thing to do with him actually giving a fuck about his kids. But more about himself and needing an insurance policy to use. Go back to the definition of use. To take as a means of accomplishing a purpose or achieving a result. What is he taking? 
He is taking the time away from the children, right? By with his purpose of having them take care of him when he gets sick. Use. So you telling your, these men that they need to use their kids as insurance policies. Next. Let's continue to what else you got to say? And treat your kids right. It doesn't even matter if you got a crazy baby mama, there's laws, you know, to fight against her. There's lawyers that can help assist you in fighting her. Is no excuse for you not to have a relationship with your children. And she's right. Those children is going to be the one that's going to have to look after you if something happens to you. Right. So, <laughs> So to make to make sure that he was saying exactly what I thought he was saying, he doubled down on it. It's the kids that's going to make sure that that's going to be looking after you. So you ain't taking care of the kids with the intent of giving those kids the best chance at life. Right. By having a father that care about them, you telling them to stay in their kids life. So when he gets sick, he'll have somebody wiping his ass. But he is it. But he will say that he is exceptional man, right? But you think just like the rest of them. Let's continue. If you have no relationship with your son, no relationship with your daughter or daughters or sons or whatever, and you, listen, we're not impervious. Today you may feel like, oh, you feel like a thousand percent, but something could happen to you. Again, doubling and doubling down on the insurance policy. Something can happen to you. So you better be in your kid's life in case something happened to you so they can come to your rescue. That's the message. He didn't double down on it three times. Now, let me continue this because she's going to bring up some other points. They want it. And and my mom has sent me this story of this man my mom always sending me TikToks. So I don't know if nobody else, but I got some people that y'all, I be up in the middle of the night with the cover over me looking at all the TikToks they be sending me. <laughs> well, my mama sent me this TikTok of this man saying, I never thought I was going to be sick. I'm just 45. And I, I never thought I was going to be sick. I'm just 45. I never thought. Listen to me, ladies. I need you to hear me real good. Men want to tell you that they leaders. They want to they want to convince you that they are leaders. But here you have a whole 45 year old man that said, I never thought you never used your brain to look into the future and plan your steps. But that's what leaders do. They plan their steps and they move with intention. They move with purpose. But you say, I never thought. I know y'all don't never think. I know you don't ever think about a single damn thing that come out your goddamn mouth. You move without purpose. Right? And you think, you think that you are immortal. And then you want women to feel sorry for you. You want women to take you serious when you don't even take yourself serious. If you don't take care of yourself, if you you live in your body. That's your body. If you don't care about your own body, how on earth do you expect a man to care about you, women? Ladies, how is he going to give a fuck about you when he don't care about himself? They are showing you that they don't put no energy, time, energy, or effort into themselves. But you want them to put it into you. It ain't going to happen. They don't even value the self. I never thought, I never thought, um, the majority of them never think. I'm sick and you know, I've been a player my whole life, so I ain't never think I needed a wife to take care of me. Oh, uh, listen to her. Did you hear what he said? She said that he said, I've been a player my whole life. I never thought that I needed a wife to take care of me. I need. Definition of need. Let me give you the definition of need. Need. 
require something because it is essential or very important. I never thought that I needed a wife. I never thought that a wife was required because it was very essential to my life. Very essential and important to my life. I never thought that I needed a wife to take care of me. Wait a minute. What you think a wife's supposed to do? What is the job of a wife? To take care of you? So job of a wife is equivalent to caretaker, which is a job. Caretaker. Women do not want to be caretakers for grown ass men who want to waste a whole life and then come back to her and rely on her for a caretaker position. Caretaker. I keep telling you that being a wife is slavery. They ain't getting with you because they like you. They're not getting with you because they see any type of uniqueness or value in you. They getting with you to use you for their own needs in every single way, shape, form of fashion. Every last one of them. And you as a woman, you do not let a man use you for his own needs. And you need to stop marketing yourself and bargaining yourself as a goddamn benefits package for a man. You out here trying to get a man by bargaining yourself as a benefits package. Stop. Stop the foolishness because they need you more than you need them. Let's continue. And that's how a lot of them think. A lot of them feel that they are supposed to be players and, you know, they don't think about who's going to take care of me if I get sick. Or they don't think about who's going to take care of me if I get sick. She, so she don't even see, she doesn't even hear that in her mind she's promoting herself as a good woman to be picked because I can be your caretaker. She's not promoting herself as a woman of value for who she is as a person, but she's promoting herself or the idea of men getting with a woman for the whole purpose of being a benefits package that a man can use. Right? Let's continue. Even when I go to the VA with my husband. Let me stop right there. So. That is another good point. You can't just be hot dicking all your life, bro. You can't. Okay. You got your time for that. I get it. Listen, I get it. You, if you, I'll say, look in your, in your twenties, you know, as long as you wrap it up, of course, be safe and all of that. But even if you, even if you meet somebody, right, because I'm a believer and that what I believe in is that now y'all see this old, y'all see this old romance picture. You see this old romantic scene as if he really love her, right? When he's actually just using her as an insurance policy. That is not, this is fairy taleism, y'all. This is fair. that is not reality. This, this picture that he used, that is not reality. The reality is the woman ends up doing the majority of the doggone work to take care of him. But he's not actually taking care of her. She's literally taking care of herself and him. So if you got to, if you carrying 95% of the doggone relationship, what you need to be in a relationship for? You don't need extra weight when you can just be by yourself. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. That's right. He, he who finds a wife, not she who finds herself a husband, but he who finds a wife because it is you that benefits from her being in your life. Your life is extended by her being in there. So there is no reason that she need to submit. There is no reason for any of these things unto her. 
You need to start seeing your value, ladies. You need to start. And the only way you're going to see your value is to really realize how much these men need you. You're going to realize how much they need you. Obtain favor from the Lord. I believe in that. Um, that's the way I was raised. I don't want to hear nothing about, oh, well, these women in America. Listen, there's no excuse about women in America because you can get you a passport, my brother, and you can go to other countries where women are still being raised in a traditional setting. You must be a traditional man, though, if you show up in those settings. Like, they expect you to provide. They expect you to have a household. They expect you to take care of the kids if you have them. They expect you to put food on the table. So let me ask you this question. Y'all hear this? Y'all hear this? So now you telling them to get passports to go overseas to do some stuff that they don't want to do here. You're telling them that they have to be a traditional man and take care of all the bills, take care of their kids if they have them. And people are saying the same thing that they that's what they need to do here, but they don't want to do it. They don't they, they don't want to do it. And you're telling them to go get passports to do it over there. You take you with you. You can leave the United States and you can go. You're going to take you with you. But you're telling them that because you're making it seem like women here are the problem. As if men are not the problem. Men ain't did nothing wrong. Nothing. So to solve their problem, they need to go overseas and do what they don't want to do here. Yeah, sounds very logical. Yeah, that sounds real logical. If you really want a traditional woman, you need to be the provider like a traditional man is supposed to be. But say, say you are that guy. There are plenty of women you can go holler at in the African continent. You know, they got women in Latin America that you want to holler at or whatever. Uh, they, some of the brothers, I'm just saying what I see online. Some of the brothers are going to Thailand and the Philippines. It's like two places. A lot of brothers are going, they going, where they going, they going to third world countries to go get people that are downtrodden, right? Who have very low standards because they are in low standard environments. Because they are trapped in their lower nature needs. Right? They can't take the United States because they are not elevating. They are not elevating. So go overseas and take your degenerate ass and your degenerate thinking overseas. And we're supposed to be sad that we lost these burdens? They're, they're burdens. We're supposed to be upset and sad and we feel like we lost something? Oh, no. Um, now, I saw this one video of this brother that did have a stroke. And he, had, he lost really mobility on his left side. He got a Filipino wife. Look, this is the dude that left the U.S. and went to the Philippines and got him... A Filipino wife. Now, looking at him, you know good and goddamn well he don't qualify for Miss Bad and Bougie over here in the United States. Not Miss Bad and Bougie getting her own bag. So you take, look at him. Look at him. So you go over there. We leaving, y'all. We are leaving. And you going to miss I got my passport. I'm finna go to the Philippines and I'm finna get me a wife. Now he done had a stroke. Let's let's see how this story unfolds. Ladies, we missing out though. We could have had him as a husband, girl. But she gotta be taking care of him. Now look at him. Look at him. Ain't ain't clean. He look, look. He looked thrown away, right? He looked like he just rolled out of bed, didn't even brush his teeth, nothing. And look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Look, look. 
Do she look happy? Do she look happy? Yeah, she's married. Look at him. Then had a stroke. And now she got our burden, ladies. Ladies, she then took the burden off of us. And she don't look happy about this burden that she done took off of us. But they think that them telling us that we too bougie and we too hard-headed or whatever, that that's going to hurt. Baby, I'm sorry, Miss Filipina. That's your problem now. Congratulations on your marriage, though. I'm happy for you. I'll send you a gift. I'll send you a wedding gift. Let's go. And he says sometimes you feel bad about... You know that. Look at that. Look. Ladies, do you want to do that? Is that what you want to do? Look, he got a dimmer in his feet. You see how swollen his feet are? Ladies, do you want to do this? Or do you want to go drink some cocktails with, the, with, with, with your lady friends? Huh? Y'all want to go, go to a Zumba class? Or do you want to be sitting up here rubbing these doggone puffy feet? Hmm? You want to waste your beauty and your youth on that? But that's what they're telling you you need to want to do. Because so the brother, he admitted he wasn't taking care of himself at all. So if he ain't taking care of himself at all, how he going to take care of her? If, 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 if you don't love self, how you going to love anybody else? He don't give a damn about her either. He didn't even give a damn about himself. Every man need to settle his behind down. Why, he, why every man need to settle him, his behind down? Why does every man need to settle his behind down? No, I think every man need to do exactly what the hell they doing. Nothing with their life. Do what you doing. Don't come to me because you're trying to use me as an insurance policy. Don't come using me. No, go out there. Keep hot dicking. Please keep hot dicking because I'm not going to care for you. And these women that I'm developing, they ain't going to care for you either. You know what I'm saying? You in your 40s, you still out there, you know, chasing women. In your 40s, really, bro? I mean, by that time, you should already have your wife. You should be settled down and have some children. I'm not telling you to get no ready-made family. That's not what I'm telling you to do. You can get you a woman to have no children and make your own family. And the reason why I'm a big promoter for a lot of straight lace brothers to go overseas, you know, so I see it all the time, especially in the African continent. I was in South Africa recently. And, you know, I saw how, you know, the, the, let me ask you this question. I want to, I, I do want to know, how are you straight laced? How are you straight laced when your intentions for getting a woman is to use her? How is that straight laced? That's what I want to know. But in his mind, he's talking purity in his mind. He's talking righteousness. In his mind, he's exceptional. But he's just like the rest of them. Use women for what you can use them for. Use them so that way you can build a security net for yourself. Not because you actually like them, love them, cherish them, adore them. They have value. They have a life force energy that will help you stay alive. You better go get you one of them. That's the mentality. That is not straight laced, sir. That's not straight laced. And y'all can't even see it. That's the sad thing about it. You can't even see it. Traditions are and things over there. Those women are ready. If you brothers are straight laced and willing to provide and, and be a man, the sisters in South Africa are ready for you. The sisters in Ethiopia are ready. If, if you're willing to provide and do what you're supposed to do. They don't want to do that here. Do you not hear the conversations? They don't want to do it here. But you telling them to go over there and do something that they already don't want to do. Not only are you going to get over there and take care of that woman, you're going to take care of her family too. Because they ain't got no social security over there in them countries. They ain't got no welfare in them countries. You're going to take care of their family. So this is in Kenya ready. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you want to go, it's your business. I'm just saying the places that I have traveled so far. But you need to get your wife, brother. You need definition of need again. He say you need to get you a wife. 
Not you should get a wife because you want a wife, but you need one. Why is a wife needed so goddamn much? Why is a wife needed? Because women don't need husbands, but men need wives. Requires something because it is essential or very important. What is so important about a wife? Hmm? What is so essential about a wife that you just need her? Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Because anything can happen to you. There was a one time, like I say, well, I had went to the hospital. And if my wife wasn't there, nobody could have went back there with me. And Did you hear him? One time he went to the hospital. If it wasn't for his wife, then he wouldn't have had nobody to go back there with him. Nobody. So is it because you love your wife or is it because you need to use her for all of the company? Right? What is it about your wife that is so special that you want to add value? What kind of value are you adding to your wife? Why does your wife need you? Huh? Because these men want to use you for all this shit that you worth, ladies, but they don't want to buy you a Gucci bag. They don't want to buy, they don't want to take you on a trip. They don't want you to ask them for nothing. But they need, they, your very existence, they need. But they don't want to do shit for you. It, it was a good thing to have my wife there to be there to support me, make sure things are going on, make sure she was standing up for me and things like that. Look, she taking care of everything. She's standing up for you, talking for you, keeping you company. A woman deserves whatever the hell she asks for. Whatever she wants, she deserves because you need her for your very essence. You need her very essence for you to live, for you to survive. You need her. But you want to just take a bitch to McDonald's and then try to say that she a gold digger, right? She a gold digger. Huh. Tell me something. Tell me something. Let's go. You brother, some of you not thinking. You thinking all this just just look, it's more to life than that, bro. Way more to life than that. Husband, it's a lot of young guys there by themselves. Like even when my husband was in the mm -hmm. hospital, they thought it was odd that I wanted to stay at the hospital and wouldn't leave him. They were like, You can go home. Uh no, I'm not. <laughs> Who did you think you talking to, Shirley? I ain't going home. I Let me turn it down right here. Never would have thought my life would look the way it looks two years from this program. H E double hockey stickies over my man. I ain't going nowhere because they, even one of the nurses was like, we're just not used to young black men having a, a spouse that stays. She was like, You want to be leaders, but you the woman got to do all the work. She got to be your spokesperson. She got to be your manager. She got to be everything while you just sit there and just let her take the reins and ride in like a little like ride in a little red wagon while she pull you along. Right? I'm not finna be no man mama. But that's what she promoting. I'm not finna do. I'm not finna let them. I'm not going nowhere. I'm gonna be here for my man. Hey, if the tables was turned, if the tables were turned. Would he be that ride or die for you? Would he be that ride or die for you? Or would he be out with his homeboys and letting you be in that hospital most of the time by yourself? And visit you every now and then. Would he be managing stuff for you? Because the, cause stats show that when women get sick, that's when most of the men, that's when they're most likely to be divorced by men. Men leave women when she gets sick. Right? 
I'm not promoting women to self-sacrifice for men who are only with them to, to fulfill their needs. That is the only reason that a man is with you. No harm. We're just not used to seeing it. Well, get used every time you see that name, boo. To the point, <laughs> every time my husband has a doctor's appointment, they be like, do I need to call your wife and let her know this information? Is it, is it okay? Yeah, because I'm going to act up about mine. That sounds like a woman taking care of her child, right? That's exactly what it sounds like. A, a woman going to a school, a woman going up to the school talking about her child. That's what it sounds like. Treat them any kind of way, and they're not used to a lot of these people having somebody to care about them because a lot of men feel like they don't have to have anybody. They've been toxic. And look, they've been toxic. Men have been toxic and it ain't a woman's job to untoxify him. Right? They getting older. Y'all know these men, these the same ones who went to high school with us are the same ones that's toxic and still ain't got nobody. And they shouldn't have nobody. And why should we give a damn? Why should women give a damn about what they got and what they don't got? That's their life. And they made their bed and they need to lie in it and we need to let them lay in it. Don't save them from their own fate. Right? Because they're the ones who are repeating this uh, Kevin Samuels and Andrew Tate stuff. So now why would you go and save them? Because they don't care about you at all. They just older now and it's outdated. And yeah. yeah. See, this one's going to be healed and whole. Now, see, that's a good woman right there. Why she good? He say, see, that's a good woman right there. Why she good? Why is she a good woman? Because she doing what you want her to do for you? you? People only label other people good when they jump through hoops or do and satisfy what they want them to satisfy. When you ain't satisfying and being like they want you to be, then you toxic or you're bad or you ain't a good person. Right? People will only label you good when you are doing something that they want you to do. Is she not only is there with her man, she's saying, I don't trust y'all. And definitely this medical system is not good for us as black people, for sure. We know this. If you watch my news channel, we, we definitely went deeper into that many times. But you need to have a good woman in your life, men. You, you need to have a good woman in your life. He just said that she was good because she do all of that mama taking care of stuff. That mama. So you need a mama in your life. Because that's what he labeled as good. So you need a wife that's going to play your mama. Be like your mama. You need that. Why you need that? Ladies, do not get with a man who needs you. Get with a man who wants you for who you are on the inside, not what he can use you for. I mean, it, it, it gets to a time that you you getting older, like say you in your thirties, whatever. You should be okay in your career. It's time for you to settle down, brother. It's time. You know you why? Cause winter coming, ain't it? It's time for him to settle down. Cause winter is coming for his ass. But y'all want to convince women it's coming for them. No, it's coming for him. Some men out here that's telling you, oh, get you a young woman, get you this, get you that. That young woman is going to be nothing but problems. You're going to have to try to keep up with that young woman. And that young woman may not even want to settle down with your behind at that moment. Get somebody compatible, I would say. But settle down, bro. Settle down. Those of you who are in your 40s, you in your 50s. And, and some of you trying to chase young women. Why? Why would you do that? Right. Don't chase what you actually like. They don't love these women. They chasing these women because they like them and they get their rocks hard. Right. So he telling telling these dudes, don't chase a woman that you like. Because that woman ain't going to do nothing for you. She's not going to be able to take care of you. She's not going to want to settle down and be your caretaker. Go chase a woman that's a little bit older, right, that you might be compatible with, that's ready to be your caretaker. That's basically what he just said. Stop chasing these younger women that you like and go look for an older woman that are, that's willing to be your caretaker. Huh.
doesn't make sense to me. Settle down. Another thing she talking about strokes. Take care of yourself, brothers. You know, hypertension is one of those things that causes strokes. There's enough. We have stress in America as black men, just period because of the, all the racism and the crap that we got to deal with the, the mess in our community. Some of the issues with the women as, as well. We have to deal with as black men. They just victims, right? Let, you, you hear them? We got all this stuff. We got to deal with these, these unruly women and then the police. And, and we just victims. We just victims. And, and, and that's the reason why all of this stroke and hypertension and stuff, you know, uh, you know, you need to take care of yourself because you are a victim to all of that. Black men ain't did shit. They innocent. They're innocent. They just victims of everything. So it's a lot of stress put on us. You know, hypertension, high blood pressure, they call it the silent killer. You don't really feel it when your blood pressure's up until you sit up there and have a freaking stroke. Then we're not exercising as brothers as we should. We all that, all that. You a victim. You a victim to all that stuff, but then are at the same time letting them know that they ain't taking care of themselves. Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Oh, you gonna blame it on the stress that, that why he ain't taking care of himself, right? Come on, I want to know the reason why they ain't taking care of. It. Who you gonna blame for that? Not eating right as we should as brothers, and it all plays into that. You can't be eating fried chicken and and, and hog malls and fat back and all the kind of you know fast food and all that is no. We need to take care of ourselves, brothers. We need to make sure to go to the doctor, check ourselves out. We need to do that because you don't want a stroke where you're paralyzed on one side of your body. You don't want that. Or you have a stroke, you living by yourself with nobody. And then you in what, living by women living by yourself with nobody. I thought that was a woman's problem. Well, men don't have to worry about that because they can get a young chick at any age. Like they say, because when it come for women, they don't come for men. What you mean? Stay at, be at home by themselves and have a stroke. What you talking about? What you talking about, Willis? Dying from the stroke, not because the stroke itself got you, because nobody got to you in time. Because you're by yourself. You have no wife. You have no Wait a minute. You have no wife. You have no wife to keep you company, right? Because you men don't like women like that. Marriage don't benefit them, right? And I want y'all to keep preaching that marriage don't benefit them. So women can realize that they were nothing but slaves in the whole thing set up anyway. And once you realize how much they need you, and once you realize how, you, how resistance, you're going to start to see how much these dudes be throwing out marriage proposals. Left and right. Do not let a man marry you. Do not allow a man to marry you. The only, do not. You understand? Having a family is a good thing. I'm telling you, as your uncle, family is good. It is a good thing. Family, you know, like I said, nobody's perfect. You know, I'm not perfect. My wife not perfect. My children not perfect. But we are a family. And I wouldn't have it no other way. I love being a husband. I love be What is being a husband? You say you... A father. What's being a husband? What is being a father? Because I know... Being a father is like, Daddy, can I go? Go ask your mama. What your mama say? I right, that ain't my. That ain't go see you. Go go ask your mama. Everything get thrown off on to the mama. So if that's what being a father is, yeah, that's easy. Go ask your mama, right? Being a husband, somebody sitting up there catering to you, yeah, that's easy. What what benefit is any of this to the wife? Because wh the wife is burned down with a bunch of goddamn work. I wouldn't trade any of that to be chasing no female. None. I don't have no interest for them like that. They don't impress me like that. Why? Because you, you know good and well you ain't finna uproot somebody that's taking care of you for something that might not take care of you. Because we're not getting with women because we like them. We're not getting with women because we love the essence of who they are. 
we're getting with them for what we can use them for. And I see no use for a 20-something-year-old chick when my wife is taking care of all this other shit. I know my wife going to go to the hospital with me. I don't know if that 20-something-year-old chick going to go. Right? I'm happy in my situation. I believe all men, and a lot of brothers do want a, a family. A lot of them do. It's not all men running around here wanting that. They just probably can't find the right one. And I so you, you see how they try to paint these narratives? You know, there's a lot of men that want families. They just can't find the right one. The right one to do what? Be a slave in an era and in a time where slavery is just, that, that's not the setup here? Find the right one for what? He want a family so he can use a woman that don't want to be used? That's why he can't find the right one? I'm, I'm confused. Get that too. That's why I'm a firm believer of get that passport and start traveling. Start traveling. See, there's other ways of living outside of this craziness in America. This craziness, right? Who is who is it crazy for? Y'all, the bar is so low for y'all that y'all can't rise it, raise it up any further than where it's at for y'all. So now because you can't raise it, it's crazy. So now let's go overseas where the bar is a lot lower, where they brainwash women and force women to be submissive to men. Let's go over there. Let's go to a third world country, right? Because, yes, I understand the modern American woman. And I said American. I didn't. They talking about you, too. Maria Latina, they talking about you. They talking about you, too, Amber. Right? They talk about all of us. Right? If you over here in the U.S., they talking about all of us. My ling, they talking about you, too. Right? Don't matter your culture or anything. If you ain't brainwashed, they ain't trying to deal with you. And it's cool because, baby, that's less work for you. Let them go be somebody else's problem. But listen to what he say even further. Say color because they all do the same thing. They all have the same attitude about uh, cooking and all that. Listen, you ain't got to deal with any of that. He ain't got to deal with it as if they ain't the problem. Forget what we got to deal with. You, you sitting up here wanting to be carried by a woman and you ain't we ain't got to deal with all of these women loving they self and putting their freedom and being and having less burdens we ain't got to put up with all that wait a minute we don't have to put up with y'all wanting to be dead wait for us to carry but listen how they word this stuff right as if they are the benevolent ones they benevolent. They ain't did shit wrong, nothing. You don't have to deal with it if you go see how it is in other countries. Just go see for yourself. And then you come back and tell me what you saw. Once you see how it is in other countries, you're like, you're not trying to date nobody in America for sure. You're going to say, man, I'm going to get married overseas because I'm, I'm not going to be putting up with all of that. Putting up with what? A woman being human? A woman existing in her total humanity and actually being free you don't want a woman to be free though right being free is too much because you and you think you entitled to a woman's body you think you entitled to her time you think you entitled to her cooking you want her to be obligated to you so you don't want to put up with the fact that the laws are not created for the fact to make these women obligated to nothing right I'm not. And I would say if you do marry someone overseas, just stay over there. Don't bring them back here. If you bring them back here, then the culture of America will rub off on your new wife, and then you're going to be back to square one. So don't, bring, don't go overseas and bring the woman back here because that woman is going to get a taste of freedom, and she's going to be saying, Eddie, what have you done for me lately, Eddie? You don't love me anymore, Eddie. What have you done for me lately? Yeah, you don't want her to get a taste of freedom because she's going to feel the same way that everybody else feels. So you need to keep her brainwashed. Stay over there in your brainwashed country so you don't know a different life. You don't know freedom. That's what he just said. Keep her over there so she don't know what freedom is. 
But let him tell it. He's exceptional. And he just like the rest of them. He just like the rest of them. I want to get y'all's word. I want to get your opinions. I want to get your opinions. Call and let me know what you think about what we just dissected. What we just dissected. Let me put the, let me put the number on the screen because I want you to call in. And there's my cash app. Hit the cash app if you enjoy what I do. I'm looking for some callers. I want to hear what you got to say. All right. But this stuff been out, ladies. These articles have been out. While I'm waiting on somebody call to call, I'm going to pull up another article for you. And I want to show you that there's a study out there that shows that Mortality is a risk factor for men who live alone, not for women. Okay, this is something that has been out for a minute now. Let's see. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, so here we go right here. So there we go, this is a, this is a research, this is research that was published in PubMed. Living alone is a risk factor for mortality in men, but not women from the general population, a prospective cohort study. This was published in 2007. This has been a reality, ladies. It has been a reality. It ain't just started. Right? So that article, it only got attention because where the universe or where the world is shifting and women are really become, becoming aware, Kevin Samuel started the shit. He started the shit. Right? And now women have begun to awaken and they're really seeing that it's some bullshit that's that's that that's they really seeing that it's some bullshit here we go we got a call a young caller hello who are we talking to hey how are you i'm excellent this is luita hey luita I'm how you doing watching. <laughs> i'm great i'm great i just listening to everything uh makes me feel like I've been married a few times so and divorced mm -hmm. so I always wonder when I was in that relationship why do I feel just like a tool you know I never felt like uh, like we're, we're like a unit it was always like I had this responsibility to kind of be a slave just being honest that's how I always felt mm -hmm. and Everything you're talking about reiterates the whole job of a wife or whatever that is. And when I left, their whole world crumbled. The whole thing. So I, I was the glue, and I never felt that way while I was married. Mm -hmm. I never got that appreciation. I never got that understanding. I never got that take care of yourself. I honor you. You know, you're my treasure. You know, things like that. Right, and so everything you're saying is just like I and and I, there was no one to talk to because I would talk to people like, and everybody would just say, "Well, I'm not married." Institution, prison, what is that? Right. I'm not dealing. With, I'm. I have been the happiest ever these nine months by myself. <laughs> so, and I don't even. I'm. Like, I'm with you. Like I. I. I don't see myself married again. I'm not against it, but. I just think I don't want to go through, I mean, it took me, I'm 43, so I got married 19, several marriages. I don't want to have to go through another 10 years to just hope that someone might understand reciprocity. Right. They won't. They're not, <laughs> they, they won't. And so, and that's why 
um, the material that I put out, the books, the courses and all of that, it teaches women to see and get in tune with themselves and really understand and really come to the conclusion that men are not capable of love. They are not capable of love. And I can prove that over and over again. Right. Even with even with (laughs) just listening to what we was listening to tonight. Nothing that he said had anything to do with valuing a woman, had nothing to do with actually loving that woman. Every single thing he told these men was to find a woman to use as a insurance policy for yourself. Yeah, a tool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I always felt like that and I had no one ever explain to me certain things. You know, I had no real example of a good marriage. I mean, honestly, when I think about it, um, I thought I did and then my girlfriend calls me and says, I can't, she's been with him 20 years. I was like, because she didn't talk about her relationship, but then she said, well, he, he's, after 20 years, he's still verbally abusing her. And I'm like, man, 20 years he can't figure it out? Wow. Amazing. Yeah, this is what we, our generation is going through. And honestly, there may be hope in the younger ones, because a lot of these young men are like, just chasing. And I'm, they're young. I'm like, I got a kid eight years from you. I can't, no, I'm not doing all that. Right. But there's certain things that I see that there might be a future. Mm-hmm. There might be something. There might be something because they've seen enough. They've right. seen enough tragedy. So that, that's what I'm rooting for, the future. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love your work. I love everything you do. I'm always on supporting, telling people about you, and I'm taking your course. And everybody get her book. I loved it. I read it in like a few hours. Because I'm just a reader. And I was just like, and it was an easy read. Big, bold print. Came here fast. I wasn't too worried. I was like, no, I'm going to send my cash out. I know it'll be here. And it was like, I think like two or three days. It was here. I was like, yes. So everybody go out and get it. Check her out. I'm about to get on your course. And uh, excited about all the work you do. Thank you so much, Louisa. What? Yeah, you got it. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Hello. I'm really on here. Yeah, you you really on here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that you said is so true. About 32 years ago, I got married in Oakland. The dopest wedding ever at the Oakland Museum. I was supposed to be in Jet Magazine. I got married to him. We went to the Bahamas. I came back and I, I left his ass uh, six weeks after. I just couldn't do it. Oh, wow. And that was that was like a thirty thousand dollar wedding back in nineteen ninety. So you know that's over hundred twenty something thousand dollars now. Right. Oh no. <laughs> don't, don't do it, sisters. Just don't. <laughs> Love you, Queen. Thank Take care. You. Thank you. All right. Bye. <laughs> She say she left six weeks later. <laughs> I know. Oh, goodness. Hey, who's speaking? Hi, this is Naima Buckner. Hey, Naima, how you doing? Hi, Princella. How are you, love bug? <laughs> I'm fantastic. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, so I'm just calling because, you know, you point out basically a lot of things that what we've seen over the manosphere in the sense that with the article coming out, The Rise of Lonely Men, we tend to see these contradictions, right, Mm -hmm. unfolding because when we come into the space of the man, you know, the men say, oh, you know, this is our voice. We haven't had a voice before. So basically women were back down. So I've been in this space too as well. Mm -hmm. And I've been a moderator moderator on a lot of, um, you know, men's channel and stuff like that. And they tell you, Okay, well, basically, basically, this is our voice. This is our opinions, and all, all, of, all, of, all of these different things. So basically, we had to kind of acquiesce to their rules, right? Right. We had to follow behind them, but now we see that we're hearing them voice their opinion, right? Year after year after year, but we're like, wait, I hear your opinion, but what are the results? What are you actually really doing? All you're doing is complaining. You're not really having any resolution to the complaint. Right. So now we see that, yeah, so now we see that, no, you just want to complain either for your own gain or so forth and so on or just for the sake of complaining. So women, in our in our head, we're like, hmm, I've been here for one, two, three years. I see there's a complaint. Let me step back. 
because it don't really take long for us to kind of recognize, you know, something, especially when we have other women such as yourself, you know, kind of pulling the veil on these different things and un unveiling this, like, listen, this is an issue. We got to little, think a little bit deeper and deeper into this. Right. And I appreciate you for this, you know, so that's why I tune into you and I really appreciate you um, because in a sense, we need this unveiling because we never had that right from, right not from our mother not from our aunties not from our grandmoms because they didn't even have it for themselves so what you're doing is something kind of new age to be honest mm -hmm. and this is new age for all women because we never really had this voice so you know we even though women always had a voice because we were very we always opinionated right and then we always had women who went against the cusp right we always had that in our communities but that was on a smaller scale, not on a larger scale. So those women, they were never the the, the the minority of voice. They were always, you know, I'm sorry, the majority voice. It was always the minority voice. Right. So with these platforms, you know, you're creating something that women can say, "Hey, let me let me let let me reevaluate that. That makes sense." Because sometimes women, it will take time because women, it, it, it's hard for us to wake up to these different things, mm -hmm. and some. Some women will get it and some women will not get it. But at least if we keep hammering it in, then eventually it will all make sense. You know, right. And do time. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I thank you so, so much. Yeah. Thank you, Princella. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Bye -bye. bye bye. Hello. Who I got? Um, hi, this is Divine Priestess. Hey, how I'm you doing? doing? Hey, I've been doing well. <clears throat> Just wanted to call in and let you know that everything that you've been saying is absolutely true. Um, and then also, I don't know if you remember, but a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week and a half ago, my dude was making comments on your show. His name was Jonathan. Uh -huh. And I told him, I said, you don't want to go up against her. Mm -hmm. But he wants to do it anyway. And you pretty much cooked him. And, uh, you know, now he's calling me Princella Jr. Um, I hate men, this and that. And I said, no, I don't hate men. I just don't deal with the disrespect. So I just wanted to let you know that everything that you've been saying is, has um, truth behind it. Because they told me I have fibroids. And that's why it was hard for me to get pregnant. Because he wanted to get me pregnant so bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that he turned that in my face and was like, that's why you can't have no kids. That's why you can't have no babies, this and that. And I'm like, I never wanted to have no kids with you anyway. I actually prayed that I never got pregnant by you. So when you were talking about when women be in the hospital and they're not there for you, that's true. He only was calling and just to find out if, you know, what's going on with me. But he really didn't care because he threw that up in my face today. Not that I was trying to have children with him. I really didn't. But just the fact that he threw that up in my face. Right. You know, so it's just the whole disrespect thing. And he can't stand you. He cannot stand you at all. Oh, he can't stand me? He <laughs> can't <laughs> you. He, he don't like me listening to you. I don't really give a damn. He can't tell me what I can and can't do. Because you, you know what? You ain't the only woman. Somebody, uh, another woman sent me a message um, to let me know that her dude told her that if she kept listening to me, then she couldn't, they wouldn't going to be together. And she told him to go ahead and go. And then when he, when she told him to go, that's when he came <laughs> back to her with flowers and stuff. See, they know I know what the fuck I'm doing. They know I know what I'm talking about. And they scared. They scared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He is. So he going to put up on our uh, Instagram. He started posting this girl named Angie Fly. Mm -hmm. And she we tell the women to be more submissive, do what your man tells you to do. And that's what he's been. He, I listen to her. I listen to her. She's keeping it real. Uh, Y'all need to be listening um, to this woman about the nuclear family, keeping a man in the home and all this and that. And he's just, his mindset is just, it's trash now. And I, I'm starting to see it for what it is. Mm hmm So I just wanted to let you know that was my dude that was making comments about a week ago. And uh, you told him he gets sympathy pussy, and I started laughing because <laughs> I don't, I, I don't sleep with him. 
I don't, because you know, I found out he was sleeping with his baby mom. It's a whole, it's a whole story. I ain't gonna get into it, but I don't deal with him on that level. So you know, hey, I just want to let you know that you are out here speaking the truth, and I appreciate it for real. And keep doing it, because I ain't gonna stop listening and supporting at all. Thank we you. Need this. Thank you oh, so yep. much. All right, have a good night. You too. Bye. Hello, who I got? Hello, Prince Ella. My name is Dana. Hey, Dana. How are you? Exactly. I'm excellent. Yes, you are. And I'm so grateful I caught you a <laughs> Yes. Um, I am subscribed to you. I found you on TikTok. I was able to get through on your call, I think maybe like two weeks ago. Yes. Um, so just listening to the women's comments, I'm, I'm making myself get used to calling in to con to conversing with you because it is it is beyond empowering for me i made a statement i want to say real quick i i have made a statement that i was older than you it wasn't it didn't have anything to do with like age and wisdom or nothing like that mm -hmm. it was it was more of a a light bulb moment for me because i'm so grateful that you are younger than us and you are blasting you are like you you have put you have put men on blast and it was like in between my wave of i was married um and i i've been doing like inner child work and stuff to realize why i kept attracting all these different relationships that were not healthy but um it like silenced me. Mm -hmm. I, be, I I became silenced through dealing with the stuff that I was dealing with, mm -hmm. not trying to play victim because now I am I've become more aware about a lot of things. But um, I, I, from the moment I saw you, I saw me in you, and I not putting you, your your astrological stuff on air and all of that. Mm -hmm. I was like, she's a fucking Capricorn. And then you and I saw another video with you and uh, I think her name is Lil D. Mm -hmm. Somebody. So that video blew it up even more. I saw your strength even more. I was like, she's so freaking focused. When when you played the cusp thing, I was like, yeah, she's a freaking aqua Aquarian. Mm -hmm. She's so detached, but dead on center, on point. You are. Um, you you lighten us up, and I'm just. I just want to express my gratitude for it, and um, I'm glad you're here to do it. I'm 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 on it. I'm I'm on it. I have my books. I purchased my course. Um, I haven't finished reading my book. It's it's like I I didn't know what to expect, but it is a very easy read. But I'm like not taking the easy for granted, so I'm taking my time mm -hmm. going through it. I had to go print out my workbook uh, last week, mm -hmm. so. I'm keeping steady. Um, I'm keeping up to speed with this. Um, and I just wanted to, to thank you again. And I get so excited watching and listening to you because you, you're thorough and you're on point. It's nothing that you're telling that's a lie. And I wish I could scream it with you. But instead of me screaming right now, I'm just going to uh, take this ride with you. And when it's time for me to let off, I'm letting off. That's wonderful. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful that you found me. I'm thankful that you took your healing and your life seriously enough to allow me to lead you to where you want to go. I'm doing it. And I, again, thank you. The gratitude is immense for what you're doing. Keep up your excellent work, Francella. Thank you so much. Yes, all welcome. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. All right. I know we got some callers calling in. Y'all can call in again. I didn't. I didn't had to decline a couple of them because um, this is my cell phone, so uh, I can only take one call at a time. So um, I think what I might do is start answering these calls and then putting them Unknown on hold. Unknown caller. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Hello. Who am I speaking with? This is Janae. Hey, Janae, how you doing? Hey, I'm back. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, I just had a really um quick question. Um, 
What do you say to the men that say, oh, you women, you guys may be empowered on the Internet. You may be saying you're going to do this and that, but you're not going to be able to hold up off the Internet. You're not going to be able to, you know, carry that out. Oh, what would you say to that? Nothing. You know what I mean? Because, nothing. Yeah. Think what you want to think. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. If that's how you feel. OK. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I don't give them no energy, right? I'm not going to sit up here and argue. I don't convince men. I let them live in fantasy and delusion land, sir, because I know you. See, here's the thing. When you know a man and you know everything about them, there's nothing that they can say. To get, I know everything that there is to know about a man. I know every tactic he'll use. I know his weaknesses. I know everything about him. So there's nothing, I mean nothing, that he will say that will rattle me. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're, that's so true because even in the short time that I've been following you, certain things that they would say where I'll just be like, okay, whatever. Now I'm more like, no, that's not true. It won't be true, you know, even to myself, because mm -hmm. sometimes we have to question ourselves. We're not at the level that you're at. Right. So sometimes ask yourself, am I really going to be able to hold this up in application? You will and once you go through the I'm course. Yeah, you go through the course yeah. and you go, you read the book, you go through the course and you do the workbook. I promise to God that when you come out on the other yeah. end, it ain't even going to be a question. Am I? You're going to know. You going to know unequivocally and there's nothing that a person can do when you know. <laughs> you yeah. know? And, and, and I'm, I'm there now and I have your book. I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to catch up with all your videos and, and all of that. And it's like, okay, do I read the book or do I watch the video? Do I watch the video? <laughs> like, so I've been slow with the book, but I'm keeping at it. But mm -hmm. even with, like I said, this short time, I definitely have more confidence. Like, no, this is true. I even call it my social experiment sometimes. I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you. I just want people to see that basically what Priscilla is saying, you've already said, he's going to try this, he's going to try that. And when that doesn't work, he's going to try this. And it happens every time. It doesn't matter if it's a hotel guy, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's your computer science guy, doesn't matter if it's Pookie and Ray Ray. They all subscribe to the same method of how to break you down. Yep. And so it's just like clockwork now. Mm -hmm. I'm getting out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it, when, when I finish everything, when my whole complete thing, you'll have... The, the workbook, the book, the five components, the, the course. Then I'm going to have my male psychology book with my 41, because I added one, my 41 different types of men in there. It's 41 and counting. I see that. Oh, yeah. This, gonna, this, this, bu this book, this, gonna, this book going to be the shit, right? Yeah. Because I'm not just going to label them. I'm going to describe them. I'm going to tell you their personality types. I'm going to tell you the manipulative things that they will say. And I'm going to show you what they will do and what they're after. And so when, when a man comes to you, you already know that he's coming to you because he wants something from you. Then you're going to be able to pinpoint what it is he wants based on what you hear. And then you can go in that book and see the personality type and say, you know what? That's this dude, and then you'll be able to have a checklist. Yeah, and so what I'm, what I'm, what I'm doing, how I'm gonna create that, is so that way, if a woman wants to deal with a man because she like him, she's not dealing with him based on what he wants. She's dealing with him based on what she like and what she want. And if the risk is not too great to deal with him based on what he want, then and only then will she desire to. To decide to deal with him but if his if he's the type of person that he is and the risk is too great then she won't have no reason to deal with him because she will be a whole person see that's why i start with the five components of love course training and all of that because once i start with your mind and then i start to fix you emotionally and repair you emotionally and then I spiritually free you now you go into a whole different ball game with dealing with men you're not dealing with them based out of need. You're dealing with them based out of want. And it's either mm -hmm. you want them or you don't. And when you don't want them because you don't need them, it will be nothing for you to drop them like a hot cake. Yeah. And one thing I'll add, then I'll let you go. Mm -hmm. I've, I, we've all been saying as women over the years, oh, men are like teenagers. They don't listen. They're slouchy, blah, blah, blah. 
But by you picking apart that they're not capable of love and other certain things, like you said, if you still want to hang around and, you know, maybe have a intimate encounter or whatever you can, but you are no longer going into betting your life, signing papers, merging your money together. You know that you're not looking for love from these guys. You know they're not right. capable. Like my child. When my child doesn't hug me at certain points when I'm sad, you know how sometimes your kid will see you're sad and be like, you okay? Mm -hmm. and, then, right. and they may not hug you. I'm not needing him to do that because I understand that he still has to be conditioned and he'll learn how to do that the older he gets. But right now, he's not capable. Right. And so seeing that in me, knowing he's not capable of really betting my life in love with him, that makes all the difference. It's just like... Yep. It's <laughs> You know, what are you investing in when you already know that it's not capable of giving you that outfit? Exactly. Just, yeah. Once women change their mind to that, because I, mm -hmm. I can change their mind to that quick. Once they yeah. see that, the game yep. change. Everything in your life change once you see that. Yep. All right. Well, thank you. I love everything you're doing. All right. Thanks, Janae. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Who... Who was the one that was been calling me? Okay. Unknown caller. Hello? Unknown caller. Hello? Yes. How you doing? Hello. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, let me make sure I turn off the um, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, my name is Tiki, and I'm calling in because you literally saved my life. And I just wanted to... Ooh, try not to get emotional, but I've been married for 12 years mm -hmm. and um, we've been together for 18 years. So we got together when we were 19. And even before him, all my relationships I've had with, with men um, have been, I don't know, just, I can tell it was very manipulative and I was falling into it because of low self-esteem and all that kind of stuff. And I was quite a few times to the point of like suicide, but whatever happened, something would step in and then I wouldn't go through with it. Mm -hmm. And literally like a few weeks back, I was, I felt myself like tumbling down into that space again. And I happened across one of your TikToks and I don't even really be on TikTok like that. Mm -hmm. And I started listening to you and Something just clicked in my mind like, oh, my God, this is like the missing piece. And when I tell you I've been trying to like, I went through the whole Queen of Fua, like Sacred Woman, all of that kind of stuff. I went, I was in the church, like trying to find this missing piece. And I feel like what you're bringing to us is that missing piece mm -hmm. to kind of bring us back to sovereignty and when I say that I have so much hope now, I just, I can't even describe it. And I have two small girls. I have a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. And it just gives me hope that I can teach them this information so that they don't go down the path that I was going down. Because I can, when I think back and think about the women in my life, we've all been kind of cycling through the same generational thing when it comes to men and like giving our power away. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a 16 year old son and I, I, I wish I would have known about this sooner so that I could kind of bring him up better. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's not too late, but I just want to tell you like you out here changing lives, giving us so much hope and I just appreciate you so much. So I just want to share that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I surely appreciate you calling and telling me that. All right. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Hello. Hey, you you really low. I can't hear you. Oh, about that. This is um. How you doing, Princella? I'm excellent. How you doing? Yes, John and Marie here. Thank you so much for everything you do. Hello to everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thanks because I'm really. I've been on this journey for a while. I'm going on my second divorce to the same man. We tried it again. And, of course, same things there. And we give people chances. Um, you know, it's not working out. It wasn't really like a bad, bad breakup. But we just really sat down and said, it's not working. Right. You know? 
and we're okay with that. We're doing better. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to just really focus back on me. Our children are grown now. We have grandchildren, you know, um, and I, I'm not in a, he's like, well, you want to be with someone else? No, I just want to pick back up the things that I did. And, you know, when I stumbled across you on TikTok, you know, some of the stuff is, it is hilarious. It really is. But you know what they say? It's a serious joke. Yeah. I really listened to what you said and it really just affirmed all these pieces that I had. And I'm like, I know I'm on the right track, mm -hmm. but I'm doing something wrong. So I'm very grateful for you because I was like, this woman is really talking about the things that I have questions about, but just couldn't find the answers. And if you just keep going, you found it. So I'm really excited. I just purchased your book. So I'm like, when is it going to get here? Every day I'm looking at the, <laughs> the mailbox. And yes. in the meantime, I'm listening. So I'm very excited. And I wanted to say thank you. You know, going into my 50s now, I don't feel the burden of, oh, my gosh, something is wrong with me. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm where I need to be. And I'm doing what I need to be. So thank you for that. And I'm also grateful that you're not like, totally bashing them like if you want to be around them you can you just have to change your perspective right. so i think that's really key that makes it very different and you know you are the you know the queen maker and that is what really sent one of the many things that sets you apart so thank you so much for that and for just being welcoming and caring about us and i like wholeheartedly support you and i can't wait till i have to finish in the book to get your course and have um you know the one-on-one -on -one, the coaching so I can unlock some other areas. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. You Bye, too. everyone. <laughs> I love these. I love these calls. I, I love the fact that I'm changing people's lives for real. And I'm so I'm even more thankful that people, random people who never seen me before, stop as I do my lives. That's why I like TikTok. Because as I'm doing my lives. It's people who are unknown caller, and they stop and they listen to me and they sit there and then they come over to YouTube, right? So this is whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm doing on TikTok must be very powerful for these people to leave TikTok, come over here on YouTube and then call in, you know? And so I, I, I really appreciate, I really appreciate those extra steps because it just gives me fuel to continue to, to do what I'm doing. Hello. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Who am I speaking with? Oh, this is Wasabi. How you doing? I'm doing all right. This is Priscilla? Yes. Oh, hi. Yeah. I wanted to say, uh, I'm a lesbian. I always had a feeling that there was someone right with them creeps, with them dudes. Mm-hmm. I just had a feeling like I don't. I couldn't put my thing on. Like I couldn't explain it in the red. But uh, I just want to say uh, I'm just here. I'm just little watch the rise of the divine family, and it's the time with the shift going on right now. I, it's time for us to get in our throne. And bounce up. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, for real. Yeah, it's, it's that time. You can see this shift. Yeah, it's it's, it's evident. It's, it's evident, and that's why this is my theory. On Kevin Samuels. I'm going to be honest. I think Kevin Samuels had a divine purpose to ignite the change. And that's why he ain't here no more. Because his divine purpose was fulfilled. He wasn't needed no more. And ever he, since. He, 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 gone, he wasn't going to be able to stand up against you. Oh, no. He wasn't going to be able to take me. No. I was he, wasn't gonna be able to, he wasn't even going to go. He wasn't even going to try. No. But see, you know what? People people would start to see the rise, and they was going to demand that me and him spoke. And that was the game because I wasn't going to call into his show. No. I'm going to make the people ask for us to talk. That's what, And I was building up that momentum. It would have got there. But he checked out too soon. <laughs> this shit deep. Hey, you know when they say that a rapture in the Bible? Mm-hmm. The rapture, I think, like, Either you gonna rise. I, I don't think it's how. I think you gotta read like you know what I'm saying. It ain't saying exactly you gotta be, but like discern, use your discernment. Uh huh. I think I think you gonna either rise and you gonna go to the fifth. You gonna go to another dimension, or you gonna are you gonna are you gonna get left behind. Yeah, I Th think that's what's going on right now. I think that's is. I I agree with you. I'm, I'm I'm in total agreement with you. And if they don't get up, which they ain't, because they they seem like they want to stay. They seem like they want to stay in the lower. In the lowest of the lowest nature, I'm like this. Hey, queens, we going to the top of the pyramid. We going to the top of the mountain. If they want to stay at the bottom, let them stay there. Let us go. Don't worry about what they doing. Boys will be boys. Let them. Let them be whatever they're going to be. They need to get up out of the throne anyway. Yeah. They need to get up out. 
All right, love. I love what you're doing and everything. I'm, I just, I've been watching you. I've been following you for a long time. And I just love, like, just watching you, like, build your, what you're doing. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Bye-bye. I love it. Thank y'all so much for sending a lot of the uh, information and a lot of the um, thanks, everything that you're saying. I appreciate it, you know, because I'm dedicating my life to this. I'm dedicating all my energy to this. And when I get out of this truck, I'm going to be able to do so much more, you know. But this is definitely the beginning, and we, are, we you can see where we going with this, right? See, and so I want to kind of bring y'all into how I process information, right? I want you to I want you to start hearing people speak what they really saying, right? And so that's why I wanted to play uh Phil's show tonight. I wanted to play I wanted to play it because I wanted you to hear exactly what he was saying. Not what it sound, sounded like he was saying, like it was a, a good message, because it wasn't. Not for you. What it, exactly what he was saying is, brothers, get you a woman that you can use for an insurance policy. I wanted you to hear that, because that's exactly what he was saying. And that's exactly how these men see you all over the world. And since that's how they see you, ladies, then this is going to help you change how you deal with them. I teach you, if you haven't gone to my website, princellathequeenmaker.com, go there. Get my book called The Five Components of Love. The Five Components of Love, this is a book that I have written. And this book breaks down love in a way that you have never heard love broken down. Love is not as mystical as you think it is. Love is very practical. And you can see it. You can understand it. And it is very easy to see. But they would like you to believe that love is something that you cannot explain. They want you to believe that love is something you can feel. And that's none of that is true. None of that is true. So you want to go ahead. I should be restocked tomorrow. My book should be here. And they'll be, they'll be back. Once you understand what love is, right? This is what love is. This book on here, this is the truth about love. I have another book, which is a workbook that accompanies this. And it teaches you and it walks you through how to apply love to the self. Right. I don't say self-love. And the reason I don't say self-love is because a bunch of people don't know what love is. Ninety nine percent of the people talking about love don't have a clue what it is. So once you learn that all love is the same. You love your car the same way that you love a dog. You love your dog the same way that you love another person. You love a person the same way that you love a hobby. All love is the exact same. So you apply the love to the self. It's an application. That's why I don't say self-love. You apply this to the self. And the course that goes along with it, it walks you through. Unknown caller. The workbook. Let's see who we got here. Oh, well, I don't know who that was. I don't know who that was. Maybe the people upstairs figured out my phone number and was calling. Right? If you didn't see this from the beginning, you understand I came to the show late because we had some, you know, thuggery going on. and some thug shit going on. Right? Yes, Mary, you do need to purchase the course. Everybody who got the book, y'all need to have the whole thing, the course and the workbook. Hello, who am I speaking with? Hi, my name is T. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, I was actually calling in because I'm, a, I'm fairly new to your channel and your TikTok. I wanted to 
test out your your theories on the man. And so I was talking to my ex and I was like I was kind of explaining to him some of the things that you say. And on his own, he agreed that men were in fact do some things just because they that was already in their nature, like that was their personality. Mm-hmm. Like, he's really also he did this for you, he kept his word, blah blah blah. That was just in his nature already. Right. So after after us talking about it a little bit more, he immediately was like, Well, well wait a minute, like I, I actually I actually do love you. Don't you know, don't assume that I don't like I know you're not applying this stuff to me. And I was like, I am in fact in applying it to you. And he was like, Well what, what but I do love you and I was like, Well, there is a there's a very clear line now that I've been watching your channel. There's a very clear line where I can tell when it went from he was just doing actions to actually he loved me. Mm-hmm. And I explained everything to him according to your teachings. And he, in fact, agreed with me. Mm-hmm. So I was just calling to tell you that. All right. Well, I definitely thank you for letting me know that. So you keep watching and you'll hear some more stuff. If you haven't gotten a book, make sure you get the book. Uh, we got a lot. Of, uh, there's a lot coming down the pipeline because this is just the beginning of it. I have the book. I'm going to be getting the workbook and taking the courses as well. But Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Oh, have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Hello? Hi there. Um, hey. I was... I was the one that was calling earlier and then I hung up because I was like, I got a little scared. Okay. (laughs) I just want to say my name is Ellie and I appreciate your existence so much. And I have a few reasons. Okay. So I'm a little excited because I was like literally hollering watching this live. Like you confirmed so much with me that I just, okay. So look, first of all, hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. They saying, they say that the connection is bad. Is not it's okay. not it's not you, it's not me. They saying it on their end. I don't know what's going on because nothing is nothing is messing up over on this side. Let's see. I don't know. I must be I'm gonna walk outside. No, it ain't you, because they said that with the last caller too. It's not you. Okay. It's you know, cause I hear you fine. They are saying Okay. Okay, okay it's they say it's fine now. All right, go ahead. Okay, so my parents divorced when I was little, and I would always ask because every time I'd be around my mama, she would talk about my daddy. Every time I'd be around my daddy, she, he would talk about my mama, right? Mm-hmm. And so I always had this feeling that my daddy is a mama's boy, and I felt like my mom was having to compete with his mom or something because they never liked my mom, right? Mm-hmm. So I like as I was listening to you, I was wondering, I'm like, did he choose? Toxic women who took care of him over a woman who was independent. Did he not like my mom because my mom wasn't afraid of holding down two and three jobs? And he was a man who felt like, well, you know, I'm going to just find me one job. I'm doing more than enough work. And maybe he did feel like that until he met my mom because he got married after my mama. And that didn't last either. But my baby sister's mother is happily married. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely feel like it's because. She was a hardworking woman and did not, like, how can I say this? She didn't let that divorce define her. My mom let that divorce define her because my mama's sister is married. Mm-hmm. And I told, my, I told my auntie, I was like, you know, I wish when I was like 18 or 19, I was like, you know, I love how you have Thanksgiving and Christmases and the family is all together and you live in this big, beautiful house in the country or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I was like, I just want to be like you when I grow up. And she told me that she wished she could be like me. And I didn't understand. And then, like, over time, I started, like, realizing that what she meant was she wishes that she had tried being independent. And I say that because my baby sister is also married now. Mm -hmm. And when she first got married, I was telling her, I'm like, you know, you just broke up with your boyfriend in high school. Are you, because I have two little sisters. I was like, are you sure that? you actually are genuinely happy with him or are you just trying to prove to yourself that you that you are worthy of a complete relationship you know i think that my family the women in my family i think that they they don't feel like they're a woman unless they have a man taking care of them 
But I think my mom always struggled with dating because she was independent. Because that's what I struggle with now. When I'm trying to talk to men, one of the first things that they say when I'm out is, as good as you looking, you have to have a man taking care of you. How do you live on your own? How do you do this? How do you do this all on your own? There's no way you paying for yourself to go to college. There's no way you taking care of your nails and your toes and you always have this, that, and the third. Like, no, you have to have a man taking care of you. And I always felt like I would, I would be dis. My mama is past, and I felt like I would be disappointed in my mama letting a man define me, like, in any aspect. Because I used to get mad at her when I used to talk to her, and I used to be like, mama, like, why don't we just go go somewhere together, right? And she would be like, oh, no, nah, you know, man, because I'm from Beaumont. So when, mm-hmm. when I saw the 832 number, I started hollering. <laughs> like, I literally started hollering. I'm like, she is texting. Yeah. Right? And so I was screaming. I was like, oh, my God. Because I was telling my mama all the time, I'm like, why don't you, why don't you try meeting men outside of the church? Because she grew up, like, she just, after she got divorced, she was, like, all up in the church. Mm-hmm. She told me, she was like, nobody... You know, she felt like she was wrong being a single parent, like God had turned his back on her for failing her marriage. And I was like, Mama, no, what if what if not everybody's perfect? And what if you chose the wrong dude? You know, like, what if it's not even about God? It's really about your choices, you know, because at the end of the day, you can't take how you feel into the bank and pay bills with that. So if you had somebody get into it with you, want to control you, dominate you, and then walk away from you because you cared more about your well-being than he did. Right. It sounds like you're a bigger man than him. Right. So I was just, I just used to be so upset with her because I felt like she tolerated so much from her family. Like, I would, like me, if my mama was like my best friend, like when I was getting towards the end, she had got cancer. And mm-hmm. I just felt like that was my chance. I just wanted to get to know her, you know, and my mama opened up to me. And it was really funny because, she had got like a tracheostomy, which means that she had got a tooth in her throat. And so she had lost her voice. Mm-hmm. And so she would have to write on the board to talk to other people. But my mama taught me how to read lips as a little kid. And that's why I say like, I love, I love God. And that's why I love my mama and I honor her and all that. And so I felt like that was my chance to really just get to know her. Like, you know, cause I was like, so we basically just developed a heavy connection and I used to ask her, like, you know, if there's anything you could have done different, what would you have done? And she was like, I would have loved myself more. Right. And so I didn't think, you know, at the time I was like 19 when she passed. I didn't think I'm 24 now. At the time, I had, it had never occurred to me to ask her to define that. Mm-hmm. So I catch myself in a relationship with someone that's older. And I'm wondering why it's not working. Right. Then I go and I find out that he's dating somebody else. Mm-hmm. Then I go. And I find out he's married, and that was last summer. So I broke up with him because let me tell you, I was I was like, what? Because basically we're out, and I'm telling him like, you know, I lost weight. I'm looking nicer now. I want to be able to go out. I want to go to nicer places. He was like, if I want, if I wanted, uh, well, I forgot how he said it, but he was basically like, if I wanted a girl with class, I would stay home. And that's how I found out he was married. Because right when he said it, he looked at me like, yeah, I know I fucked up, right? Mm-hmm. Part of my friends. So at that moment, I'm sitting here. I'm telling you, I was tore up from last year going into this year. I was tore up. I'm praying. I'm crying. I'm like, God, like, how did I not see this? What's wrong with me? And it hit me. This older man went looking for girls that didn't know, in, like, didn't know nothing about nothing. Right. Did not, like, because, you know, we're young. Like, I don't, like, I had to listen to a woman on TikTok, which is also how I found you. She had managed to get infected with HIV from her husband. Mm-hmm. Right, who was an older man, and she was 19 at the time. And she literally said he went and he was looking for young girls to take advantage of because, and, and she proved this, she said, because we're afraid to speak up. So she would get on live with these men, which is how I found her page, and she would ask dudes my age. Now, my job's 24. She would ask them, how often do you get tested? When's the last time you've been tested? And the first thing they would say is, oh, well, I don't get around, so I mean, I know I'm clean. Right. Mm -hmm. Which was wild to me because I'm a person who gets, you know, women, we got to get at least checked once a year with the past man and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I know I'm saying a lot, but I was just I was just basically just realizing, like, when you were talking, I was like, wow, you making a lot of sense because people try to make me feel bad for asking questions. People try to make me feel bad for wanting to really get to know what's going on with them. And as soon as um, I met a dude two months ago who's from out of state. He comes down here, right? He acting like, oh, he don't be out here like that. Then we go out yesterday, and he tried to, like, touch me 
um, he tried to smack me on my booty, and we at the freaking theater, man. Right. And so I'm like, I'm like, why? I said, you need to like, I don't like this. You need to respect me. I started going off. I wanted to go home, mm -hmm. right? So when I finally, like, when we finally get in the car and he's taking me home, because I rode in his car, I let him pick me up, which I realize now was a mistake. I was about to say, <laughs> don't don't ever let no dude pick you up. You don't want to put yourself in a vulnerable position because you don't know what these dudes always drive your own stuff and go. Don't depend on them for nothing. I don't care what it look like. I don't care if it is romance. You drive yourself so, and you can leave when you feel like leaving. Don't ever put yourself in a vulnerable position like that no more. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was realizing I'm like, as we're as we're headed home, he's trying to bring up what happened. He's like, you got an attitude now. You ruining the vibe, and he's making it like I'm I'm being problematic for being uncomfortable. And I was realizing at that point, this man does not respect me. And so it was hitting. It was like I was realizing I'm like, I, as a kid, I had felt like my daddy for him to marry my mama and not care about her. He he not consider it and so I had always felt like like I was afraid of like getting to know men and getting serious with men because I had felt like it's only a matter of time before I start seeing that they really don't care about me and I didn't know if I was tripping like if I was thinking ill of people and trying to put a judgment on all of them but when you said that they were incapable of love it kind of made me think about how when we're kids they say that the men take longer time to mature than the women Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's funny because I feel like no matter what guy I'm talking to, eventually I feel like I'm realizing I'm talking to somebody that has the emotional intelligence of, in, intelligence of a dude in like middle school, mm -hmm. you know. And I started thinking, I'm like, is it is it me? Am I too smart? And then I started talking to my homegirls and I'm realizing we all got the same problems. So my back to my little sister. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. So my little sister, she tells me she's like, um, how do you feel about me being married? And so I didn't know how to tell her that I was actually worried about her, you know, because I didn't know how to say that without sounding bad, you know. Right. And because, because and I'm going to tell you why I was feeling like that, because I felt like if you don't know yourself, how do you know that you're happy and that you're married, right. you know. And for her to be married at like 20, you know, I just I just felt like I don't even know myself fully. And I'm 24, like, if, you know, and I was like, maybe she's smarter than me. Maybe I missed something. I don't know. So I, at the time, I told her, like, you know, I don't feel anything. I wish you well because mm -hmm. I genuinely do. And so she uh, she called me this year, and she was telling me, she was like, I don't know what's wrong, but I just feel miserable. And I was, I didn't know how to tell her that, if, you know, if you're taking care of yourself and you're taking care of somebody else, but you can't even open up to that person. You're going to feel miserable. You're going to feel exhausted. You're going to feel spiritually, physically exhausted. She's trying to do, she try, She got a job that she do. Then she work on the side. And she got all of these jobs that come with being a wife. And, and I swear, like, I don't know how to say that. And it just freaks me out sometimes because I worry about her. It's my baby. Right. You know? And so when I was listening to you on live, I'm telling you, I was really sitting up in here and I was screaming. I was praying earlier today, like, like, Lord, if there's something I'm missing, you know, if I'm, if there's something that I'm missing where, you know, where you can help me become a better woman so I can find a better man, let me know, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I'll go out with guys that I'll get to know them, and they they love to drop the, oh, well, you 24 and about 10, you got about 10 years to start having kids. They love to drop that on me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, first of all, I'm, I've never been a person that was afraid of adoption. Why do you think? I need a biological clock, right? And mm -hmm. so I've had, I would say about three guys tell me that just this year. And one of them, I told him, I was like, you know, if you want to get technical, because let me tell you, I started getting annoyed, right? I was like, if you want to be technical, people who eat red meat, you know, um, that that affects, it clogs up their arteries, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why then an early sign of heart disease, I had read this somewhere, an early sign of heart disease is erectile dysfunction. Right. So if a man starts, which means if he starts, um, like, oh, this is like, I know it's personal, but if he can't keep it up, right? If he can't, like, if he can't keep whatever you give me, yeah. um, basically, that's a sign of, in the, he better start going to a doctor because in a minute, he might have a heart attack, he might have a stroke, right? Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was funny that you was talking about a dude that was in Asia. Okay, this is the last thing. You were talking about that dude that was in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I actually have an uncle 
who lived in the Philippines. He went to Manila and got married, taking care of her whole family, and he hate he hates the women down here. He can't stand either of his baby mama. You let him tell it, he the victim. They are problematic. He never he like and the last girl that he dated out here was close to my age. She was two years older than me. Mm-hmm. And that was about four years ago. Mm-hmm. Right? He goes out there, he all happily married and he doing this, that and the third. And I had always felt like and and, and this is why I, I don't I don't think some girls out there I don't think they're so. I think they're smart because let me tell you why. He went out there, he getting taken care of, right? But that girl met him on Facebook. She was out here looking for her an American. And I don't know what the rules is out there, but I can bet money that the goal is to fatten these men that are already dying up so that they can, you know what I'm saying, get their citizenship, get their babies, and they're going to come to America. I'm trying to tell you. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just be saying prayers for them. Because they really are picking up our burden. And it, it literally does make more room for us to have in life to get to know dudes. And I think, the you know, it, not every dude has money like that. So not every dude can afford to go out there. And I think it's going to come a time where, like, how the shift is happening. And the woman was saying about the shift earlier, the rapture. I believe she's correct. Because I'm looking around and I'm seeing it. I'm seeing, like me learning how to speak up for myself and saying how I really feel. Guys will sit up here and act like I'm the problem, but then they start calling me back from different numbers. And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm such a problem, why you won't leave me alone then? Right? Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you. I can't wait to get your look in your workbook. Okay, I'll be watching. And I swear every time I'll be looking in, I've been following you for like two months. And I was like, Thing. Thing. Like every time I check in, that book is sold out, and I'm screaming. <laughs> I'm like, give me my book. Like, but it's all good though, you know. So thank you so much for existing. Thank you for speaking up. Thank you for being willing to show, share your life experience with us. Because I have always been afraid ever since I was little. What if, what if I get with a man and I'm doing right by him like my mama did? I'm letting him take care of me. I'm taking care of him. I'm paying for my mama paid for the marriage. Okay. That man tried to, my, my daddy, he went, he went left on her, right? And so she walked away and she loved him while she did that. And it broke her heart. And it, and I mean, even in the end, she was like, your daddy, your daddy was the love of my life. I just wish he would have done right by me. I have always been afraid that what if I give my all to a man and after the divorce, I can't move past You ain't going to give your, because we got kids you, together. You, you messing with me, you ain't finna give up your all to no man. Right. You, will need, so you, you, you won't need, you won't have no reason to. Thank you so much. Th- I appreciate you. Thank you, Ellie. Good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Right. All right. I love it when young people call, right? I love it when young people call because that's 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 definitely what the group we need to be talking to. The twenty something like if you because these men are looking to take advantage of them. And they will they will gaslight older women and say we want the younger women, but they ain't trying to do right by these young girls either. They get them pregnant, they use them, they abuse them, and then they gaslight them when they get older. Well, you chose the wrong man. You wasted your youth and beauty on the wrong man. The majority of these dudes are the wrong man. I want you all to understand, the, as long as you keep dealing with these dudes... With a patriarchal mentality, okay, as long as you continue to position yourself in a patriarchal mentality, you're, the majority of these dudes going to be the wrong dudes. But once you get to the queen status and then you see how to walk the dog, you see how to put the leash on their neck and you walk that damn dog, you can make a lot of these dudes walk. And a lot of these dudes will be the right dude because they going to do as you say do. And if they don't, you going to go. Right? The problem is, is we dealing with these dudes from a patriarchal mentality and philosophy and allowing them to run stuff. They were never divinely put in, made to be out front. They was designed to be behind you. Women, you have to be the ruler. You have to be the controller. You have to be the leader. And when you think like that, then the game change because they need you more than you need them.
Right. Right. Oh, you rusty nails. First of all, I understand what that rusty nail mean. You know why? Because I was dating a 55 year old when I was 28. And that's what he called his little thing. Rusty nail. So you think. You little riot. Yeah, yeah, you rusty. Uh huh. You think you a good man. No, you a good boy when I put that dog leash on you. Sit. Heal. Yes. Unknown Jump. caller. Fetch. Good boy. Yeah. That's when you're good. Hello, how you doing? Hi, peace, peace. How you doing? I'm excellent. I I can't believe I'm calling you. I just I just uh got blessed with your presence about two weeks ago. So I haven't got the book. I haven't got any of the material. My sister actually my my little you know, my god sister, she actually put me up on you. She said she sounds just like you. You gonna love her. You gonna love her. I was like, Oh, let me hear, let me see what she's talking about. Because I get so tired of, you know, people sending me stuff, especially knowing how I am about certain things. Mm -hmm. I've been on this tip for a minute, but I've been a loner. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't have a big following, but I do post this stuff on social media. So I always get from those conversations, big time backlash from men. I've been attacked. I've been, I've been bullied online for the same stance. The only thing is you took a philosophical approach. You got the book knowledge. You got all the, 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 the receipts. I don't have that. I just got that I observed. Mm -hmm. And what I've lived. So I just pick up on that and I just put that out there. So I'm so excited that you, this young woman, this young, beautiful, successful woman is actually representing everything I wanted to do. But I'm, I'm like, you know, I don't like I said, I don't have this big following. I'm older. I'm way older. So I'm at this level where the ladies my age are these, you know, I'm looking for a man. I want to get married, you know, time like I've done that. I was married when I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And that was like a relationship from hell. And I was the only one that was trying to tell people, I don't think it's the right time. I don't think it's meant to be. And you know, I'm not going to get into my relationships because that's just, you know, stuff that's in the past. However, I just look at the way things are and the patriarchal world that we live in. And I realize that I'm like, this is why we fucked up. Right. I said, we've been under patriarchal rule. Mm -hmm. And under the rule, we, we, we have no protection as women. Absolutely. We have no protection. Absolutely. And we out here, you know, trying to, I don't want to say trying to, it's just like we haven't figured it out. The psychology of it, the philosophy of it, and all boils down to what we're under right now is this patriarchal rule, and it's got to end. And I've been warning men, I'm like, y'all, y'all time is running out because that feminine energy is pushing this way in. If y'all don't humble yourself and correct what this problem is, she gonna turn y'all into bitches. That's why y'all complaining all these gay men out here. You know what? Y'all complaining. Mm -hmm. You know what? They said, see, black folks took the Bible to say that white people had 6,000 years to rule and then it was going to be turned back over to them. That's actually um, not the truth. That book is saying that God is coming back after 6,000 years. Ooh. And yes. that bitch is coming back right now. Yes. That bitch is coming back now. <laughs> yes. You can see it. Mm -hmm. And you can see it. And, and, and just like this whole Kevin Samuels thing, like I didn't say two words about the whole thing because I saw it was a script. Mm -hmm. Now it's a script. You know, it's a script. It's a, it's, a, it's an agenda. It's a separate you, divide you. And oh my gosh, these people had me going in. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, why, why is this your godfather? Even in this man's death, he caused him division. But y'all okay with that? Mm -hmm. Y'all worried? Y'all y'all worried about what this man said based on? Excuse me, I'm trying to you know be racist, but we, we get our knowledge from the cracker book of morals. Mm -hmm. You prove in all those books and all that knowledge because I just started watching just about two weeks ago, so I know you covered a lot that I'm missing, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try to catch back up. But you covered a lot in those books and the psychology of of men, and that's exactly what they was created to be in this system. Why don't y'all break free and heal yourself from that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's okay because the way how I teach women, when when it's all said and done, he won't even be an afterthought because mm -hmm. when women will start to go back to their natural way of being, which is being communal with other women and not in competition with other women. 
Right. And I, one of the classes that I'm going to give is I'm going to break down and show how men completely flip the game. I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it. I'm going to show the yeah. positions and everything so women can clearly see what I see. Right. And yeah. once she sees that, it's over. It, it, I mean, it's it already is. it's already over. It's already just, over. With, just with the love thing that I'm teaching. But when I mm-hmm. show her, when I show her how the chessboard has been turned around, and the only thing that has changed is the positions of the players, she's going yes. to really, really see who she is and who they are. And once you see that, you won't even hear nothing they saying. You tune them out. Let them say whatever right. they're going to say. Because here's the thing: their resistance. To elevating is going to be their demise. And the, the women that I'm dealing with, they will not save them. Let them exactly. stay. Let them stay where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. been single for a long time. And the reason being was because of my son. You know, my son was, was, was put in a, in a bad situation with some family members. And he was uh, uh, a victim of molestation. So I put up a big wall mm-hmm. because the person that molested was a male mm-hmm. and I didn't trust men. I didn't trust men around my son. Mm-hmm. Like I dated men, but I, I put up a big wall between that because of what happened to him and what happened with my situation that I was dealing with with men. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying, I'm still trying to figure out like, where do I fit in in all this? I'm 51 years old mm-hmm. and I've been single a long time. And I came to the conclusion that I really, really am okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be okay. Yeah, you will. You will. Women, the, the one thing women have to do is stop competing against each other. See, when you when that stop when that stops, oh man, it's even going to be worse for them because exactly you because the woman is the backbone of the community because yeah. women are naturally communal, men yep. are naturally wired to compete against each other. So he's he's never going to be full and whole amongst dog eat dog it's a dog uh-huh. eat dog world so uh-huh. who is he going to barge in on he's going to barge in on a community of women uh-huh. and those women determine if he is righteous enough to be amongst them uh-huh. it's not exactly. see men flip turn po- polygamy men turn polygamy into some degenerate oh, patriarchal God. bs so he can have yes. access to multiple women. No, 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 no. Women, yes. That's not how poly- polygyny went. Polygyny was something that women created that they ran and they selected. Yep. And they yep. basically passed him around like a hotcake. Right. <laughs> they ran that. And he right. got out there and tilled the fields or whatever they told him to do. Right. Yep. Right. He don't get yep. to pick the women. Yep. You don't get to pick nothing because you ain't in control of nothing. Yeah. Right. And the only man that would get picked is the one that competes and outperforms the others because he's less dangerous. The man that taps into his feminine side is the one that mm. will get chosen. The balanced mm-hmm. man. He is the only one that's righteous and worthy enough to be amongst these women. Mm-hmm. Right. So women need to stop competing for that which is inferior to them. Mm-hmm. The hell are you competing with somebody who can't? Why are you competing with other women to validate yourself on somebody that is naturally beneath you? Yep. Men are naturally beneath you. So why would you allow somebody that's lower than you to validate you? Men, mm-hmm. it, it needs to be the, the, the true saying is, man, all that shit you talking. But do you have a wife? You ain't got no white right. dude. That's the yep. that's the real game, right? That's because right his that's his right. validation come from whether mm-hmm. he got a woman or not, not mm-hmm. whether a woman has a man because she's full without him. Yeah, and I try to address that too in in a way, um, but like I said, I go by observation. I don't report on what I see, but what I do see is a lot of these. I call these I call them pick me hoes mm-hmm. that be in the comments that be agreeing with these men. They they, they Kevin Samuel's minions too. And they be the ones, you know, talking about, yeah, women need to be more submissive and all this kind of stuff. And and it's, it's I get I get on them too. I get on the ones like you said, they compete with each other. Because right. a lot of men be like, you know, y'all be wearing all these nails and fake hair. I'm like, we not wearing that. They not wearing it for you, honey. Mm-hmm. 
they wear for each other. Right. Women don't wear their clothes and, and the hair and the weave for y'all. They, they hate it for other women. So another woman, so another bitch can say, oh, that's bad. Oh, I like that. You know, it is, and, and they don't get it. I'm like, it's not for y'all. Y'all can complain all day about lashes and weave. It's not for y'all. Mm -hmm. We they, wear it for each other. The reason why, the reason why they think like that is because First of all, they don't even consider you as human beings and they don't even uh -huh. consider you as your own thought processes. Everything that they see is based on their own behavior. So men do things to be validated by women. They do everything because of women. Right. Mm -hmm. So they assume that women do things because of men when that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. Women do stuff without even considering his existence. And he, yep. when you tell him that he doesn't want to hear that because men want to feel needed so bad because they know innately that they are not a necessity on this Ooh. planet that much. They know that. They know that they are useless overall. This is why they this is why they look that they validate themselves by external things. They need uh -huh. materialism to make them feel worth something because without it they don't have anything because one they don't want to build themselves up so they feel inferior without external ma or materialism uh -huh. to boost them up. If you had to judge him based on who he is as a person, a lot of these dudes know that they ain't shit. Mm. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's gotten to the point where, like, seriously, I, I literally was in a position where I was, I was crying and hurt because of the text I was getting on social media. Mm -hmm. During this whole can even before Kevin Simon thing, because I posted stuff about polygamy, because that was a thing that I see that's popping. You know, uh, another trend, another bullshit ass trend that's going around. And I'm telling, I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all, I was like, y'all, this 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 Pan African bullshit talking about, yeah, our people used to be polygamous, and the white man came and turned us monogamy. I said, no, we created monogamy, baby. Mm -hmm. White man didn't create monogamy, because they was up in the caves fucking anything uncivilized mm -hmm. but y'all y'all want to sit up around here and and put, put polygamy on african uh uh you know consciousness and it's part of our consciousness and and, and men uh supposed to have more than one wife we pose a nation bill i'm like nigga tell me one nation built off polygamy hmm. i wait i wait give me one nation that was built off polygamy right and they can't they don't, they don't say shit because i've been approached by uh couples i've been approached by sister wives who said, yeah, we was, in, you know, one of you interested, you know, there was, there was one, that was one particular case where I noticed that she came to me mm -hmm. and I, I got less that. I'm like, no, nah, I'm straight. I'm right. not, I'm not no lesbian, but you know, um, <laughs> you know, cause that's, that's eventually, you know, it's to me, it's eventually. Yeah, about it's, 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 about it's corrupt crap because what happens is polygamy ain't even something that women try to do, right? It's something that becomes natural because women naturally, become helpers with each other, right? They be naturally, so it's not that they, that they, a bunch of women get together and then they go in and look for their dude. That's not how that works, actually, right? Mm -hmm. So women are helping each other, right? They, mm -hmm. they take care of their kids together, whatever, they become a community, right? One yeah. person meet a guy and evaluate him. She like him, then she bring him over there and they all evaluate him, figure it out. And they choose if they want him over there. That, that's yep. about, yeah, it's some accident. It, it ain't even something that happened like they just purposely going out looking for no man. No, they are happy and peaceful amongst themselves doing whatever mm -hmm. they do. And then a dude come over there that they they all decide that they like and they they bring him there. That's basically mm -hmm. how that shit go. Yeah, right? it's kind of like that. I got a sister circle. It's a group of us um, ladies. And um, for the most part, most of us are single it might be one that's, that's um married and one is um about to get married mm -hmm. but the whole thing is you know when we have our you know because i think it's community we trying to build a community we trying to heal the community we had a little organization and all that it's only one man that comes into the sister circle and it's because and it's because he's exactly that man that knows our power right he ain't trying to run over in fact i think he get a big kick out 
Mm -hmm. I'm like, you get a big key, you gotta have all these women around you, don't you? Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, he's like, he's, he's, he's one of those types. And it is a few men out there that's like that. Because I've met a few. They put me on the game. They told me some things that I've, you know, um, um, heard you mention. I'm like, yeah, these, these, these brothers, I call them my brothers because they're not afraid to touch their feminine side, but they get attacked by men. They get called simps and all that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. they're trying to shed a light on it. And they're not about, they're not trying to pussy pander either because they're all about knowledge. They don't care about pussy. Right. It'll come to them, especially the way they are. It's going to come to them. They're going to get it thrown in their face. Mm -hmm. But they, and they, they're just about knowledge. They're about sharing this knowledge. They see, right. you know, the need to, to, to let women know and empower women. Right. And because they do that, they get called simps and, you know, gay lords or whatever it is and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm like, y'all just, y'all exposing yourself too much. And I got all these receipts because I, I copy, I screenshot all that shit. I just haven't put it into a, a file so that I could really, when I'm ready to bring these receipts, I'm not about to show all you niggas on social media how y'all are. Right. And what y'all say and the things y'all post. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if y'all do it to get a rise out of women or y'all, uh, you know, you, you, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's just a big division agenda going on. Mm -hmm. And women, and these niggas are the lead. Now, my question to you is, what do you tell those pick me hole type of women? The ones that's all about submission and making their man the king and making him the household, head of the household. I don't what say do you tell those types? I, I don't say Those types get on my nose. They irritate my soul. I don't say nothing to them, right? Because concubines slaves and queens all think differently i am mm. not interested in turning every woman into a queen we need some okay. slaves out here i need a, <laughs> i need a pick me i need a pick me because if you come around and you let me know that you'll pick me and you think i'm gonna need somebody to clean i'm gonna need somebody to wash my my socks right <laughs> no i'm serious we need slaves i want her okay. to be a slave right break mm. your back okay. Break your back, cause see, they don't know. They don't. They don't know who they. They don't know who they fucking with over here. These mm. women don't know, cause if I was dealing with a dude like some chick want to talk about, she, you know, ladies, if you want, if you want me out the picture, then do the things you used to do, cause all of the things that you ain't willing to do, I'm willing to do. Now, ladies right. and women, wives, don't get me. Bitch, you come and tell me that? <laughs> I don't want you out the picture, ho. I don't want you out the picture. I want you all the way in it. And I told him, I said, I'll be, I said, my, let me find out my dude been cheating on me with you. He walk in the door. I'm, I'm, he walk in the door. I'm sitting there smoking my little thing. He walk in. Hey, baby. What's up? <laughs> well, I'm finna, well, I, I know you, you seem like you're sitting there relaxing. Well, I'm finna go take a shower. All right, go on, take your shower. I just want to let you know, I know you've been fucking around. What? 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 No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. I know you've been fucking around. I saw that bitch video. She talking about she going to do all the things I, I ain't willing to do. You show, she, you show she willing to do anything? Oh, oh, no. Well, go see if that bitch willing to do anything. Tell, right. her, tell her to lick, tell her to lick your, the bottom of your feet and suck your toes. And I want you... I want you to record it and send it to me. I want to see if that bitch willing to do anything. Tell her, tell her that my wife, she she don't <laughs> she don't do nothing. And I as you know, I think I'm gonna leave her, and and make her feel oh real my God. good. How yeah. many how many how many of those inboxes that I get from married men? Mm -hmm. And I keep them receipts too. I keep them. I keep them too. I was mm -hmm. like. Y'all be the main ones on there talking shit about women, but you and somebody in by with your married ass. I don't. Oh, I, I could expose all of y'all. I saved a lot of marriages. I'm like, I could expose all of y'all. I don't like married men. I, I never was attracted to a married man. It don't matter. Never. It don't matter. It don't matter if he married single. They all the same. They all gonna use game mm -hmm. to get what they want. They all are approaching women. For what they need her for period it don't matter mm -hmm. so i don't even mm -hmm. if i'm a deal with a man i ain't even gonna it don't matter your status because chances are i ain't gonna do nothing but fuck you anyway and send you back <laughs> home I, I, i'm, I'm exactly. serious it ain't nothing he ain't nothing you can do for me homeboy go exactly. back to your wife right go back to your wife because yep. i'm not i'm not the one that's gonna be talking about ladies you want to get me out the picture to do the things that you used to do, cause I'm will. I ain't willing to do nothing for you, homeboy. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Exactly. 
Mm -mm. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, but I just, I just, I just, I'm so grateful for you. I mean, it's like a breath of fresh air because even though I got my sister friends, they not nowhere near where I'm at. They just look at me as a person that's always causing trouble with my, you know, my opinions and whatnot. But it's so refreshing to see a young, beautiful lady that know her shit. I have never seen that level of um, knowledge on on how men are from anybody, not even my age, not even older. It's like this is a phenomenon because it's never happened before. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to people telling women how to be submissive. Grew up in church telling you to love your husband, treat your husband like a king and all this stuff. And even listening to the ministers telling women to stay with abusive men because God don't like divorce and shit like that. It's, 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 I've never seen women actually, I've never seen a woman um, as, as phenomenal as you at your age to, to pull it off. I just, I just really hope that the whatever guardian angel ancestor, I just hope you send you protection because it's gonna get real ugly. Oh yeah, for I you, know. Sister. Oh, I know. And it's, 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 and I, and I, and I'm, I'm saying that because I already see it. it these men are, are, I hear it when they, I see it in their comments. I'm in Facebook jail. That's why I can't comment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be wanting to comment on them posts because I like to say, when she hooked me up to you, I went to your page, I saw it. I was like, oh my God, this sister is, this sister is everything, and she young, oh, this, 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 this gonna happen, it's gonna happen, I've been waiting on this, I've been waiting on some validation, because I don't see it, mm -hmm. and like I said, I get backlash from so many men, and even some women, because I'm one of the people, I can't stand Shahrazad Ali, I don't care who likes her. I don't like her, and I don't like the message that she sends. Because she, like she don't even know what she's talking about, like, if people think she's saying stuff so powerful, Shahrazad Ali don't even have a clue of what she talking about. When I listen, no, and don't have a man herself. Right. <laughs> like, it's just a bunch of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I don't listen to people. I don't watch people. T I don't watch people's uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't watch nothing. I stopped watching TV when I was 19 years old. Okay. So I think for myself, I'm, I'm a total yeah. independent thinker. This is the reason why you don't hear other me other people saying what I because I don't regurgitate what other people say. I don't listen to exactly. people. I I think for myself and everything that I say is original. <laughs> it comes from my it own is. thought process. It is. I haven't heard, like I said, I feel the same way, but I haven't I haven't, you know, articulated my things the way you have because like I said, you come with the knowledge, with the receipts, you got the statistics. You got something that these niggas can't even argue with. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously. Mm -hmm. So, my, like I said, my, my, my approach is just based on my observation. So, most of the time, I'm fussing and cussing, basically, because it's opinion, yeah. and it's what I see. And I'm like, it's some yeah. bullshit. What is mm -hmm. wrong with y'all? Right. So, that's why I, I copy all the, I, I, you know, screenshot everything, because I'm like, it's going to come a time where y'all going to try to deny how wicked y'all are. And right. I got the proof right here. I got the receipts right here. Mm-hmm. Right. That whole Kevin Samuels thing, that thing, uh, it it unnerved me so bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was so pissed. I understood the, the 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 game that he was playing, the script that he was running. But what what happened is, I wasn't tripping about him per se. It was the the the, the Negroes. It was right. their their approach and their attitudes and their. I'm like, see y'all. He done exposed y'all. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. Mm -hmm. He done exposed y'all. But I just wanted to call in and let you know. I'm 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 so happy i'm so impressed i'm so glad that that you coming out the gate with this info with this knowledge and it, it's irrefutable and that's gonna piss a lot of people off mm -hmm. so you just protect yourself sis i'm all the way in detroit but i'm, I'm the type of person I'm, I'm i got your back so just just um you know just protect yourself and I, i'm gonna send protective energy to energy your way because i'm not a i'm not a religious person anymore so I, I'm not going to say I'm praying for you, mm -hmm. um, but I am, you know, hope to send the protection your way because these, these niggas is going to try you. Your energy going to get drained. You're going to need to be refueled. So, you know, just peace and power to you, sis. I appreciate you. Thank you. I so, do. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. All right now. All right. Peace. Bye. I love it. I love it. Anybody else? I, I, let me call this 510. Let's see.
Hello. Hello, it's Princella. We still live. You know what? I talked with you earlier today. Uh -huh. I just want to say that I am um, a mental health social worker, a peer specialist, mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of studying myself because I do suffer from mental health issues. And you are helping a lot of women heal mentally because a lot of women are their depression comes from dealing with men. Fifty percent of women's depression comes from dealing with these men. Mm -hmm. And then the people, other women want to say, like me, I'm no, you just hate men. Oh, you so negative on men. But I've been seeing this gameplay. You know, I done been, I done tried women. Women got their own game, too. You know, but what I'm saying is, in what you, I just found you just recently, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so impressed. Because I've been saying this, and I've been like, you know, I'm that crazy one. I'm this, that, and the other. I'm like, I just came by the game. I'm not about to bow out on the game. Right. I ain't do it. Right. You know, and I'm the one that called in about that wedding. My father uh, gave me like $15,000 toward this win. He was like, and you left this N-I-G-G-A uh, in, in 10 weeks? But my daddy laughed about it. Just recently, my father passed. Mm -hmm. He passed in May. And you know what? That was one thing that he left about. He said, you know what, I gave you that much, took that loan out, and I didn't even finish paying that loan back before you left that nigga. Mm. I'm not bad. And, and the man bought me a house, but he had other he had kids by another woman. I was younger. And the game with the younger women is this, okay, watch the kids, and this, that, the other, be the mother to the kids. But, you know, me and the oldest daughter seven years apart. Mm -hmm. So you think you flossing with a young woman, but me and the, the, the oldest daughter, Funky, but you so flossing that you can't even, you know, do. I'm not supposed to discipline your children. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to discipline your own children. And the older women told me not to marry him. He's nice, he's this, he's that, but don't marry him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when older women tell us stuff, we got to really listen. Because they, they, now we're telling the stories and they are telling the stories. But they weren't telling the story. They just tell you, don't do it. Right. So I just really want to um, thank you. And I don't normally look toward other women to validate what I'm saying. But I've been seeing the Kevin Samuel thing. Uh, I know one lady on your show didn't appreciate me. I was one of the very few women that I've seen when um, Kevin Samuels just simply said, men should be with other men. Right. Then a whole bunch of people catch that sentence. You know, I've been around a whole bunch of gay men, and I've been around a whole bunch of gay women. You, if you're a heterosexual man, you don't say no stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He said men should be with other men. Yeah. So it's emotional homosexuality is what that is. Mm -hmm. well, they just been, want us to cook and clean. I've been saying I've been saying this for a long time. I think I'm a little bit ahead. I think I'm a little bit ahead, You're ahead of your time. Uh, my time, right? And so when I say stuff, it be so far ahead that people don't get. Oh, but I talked about this like three years ago. And I, I, I got these videos and they're on private. Mm -hmm. now, uh, now that we're in the time, I can take them off private and let, let them go mm -hmm. again. Because I've been saying that there's a straight does not mean that a person is exclusively heterosexual a dude could be having homosexual sex and still consider himself straight right and mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and people don't understand that but i do understand it right i understand the nuances of how that operates so now that this is really coming out more into the forefront now you have people saying this this emotional uh, homosexuality and all that stuff. I, I had been, I had already been said this stuff. So we're gonna. And uh, please drop the statistics on these black women again because they they cannot see just see the pattern of the down low men around their men. And I I don't care about that. What I'm talking about is black women still hold the highest rate of AIDS and HIV other than any women in the world. Mm-hmm. 
And that's because Whether, you that's know, because they you stick, know. that's because black women typically stick with black men. So who they will be having sex with is black men, and these dudes are really going out doing some some raw dog stuff. And so that's gonna be that's gonna be a topic for another discussion, right? Mm -hmm. um, so y'all y'all can stay tuned for that show when I go back and talk about that. Uh, but I definitely thank you so much for calling in for sure. And I appreciate you, sister. And you know what? We all the women, you know what? You really is blessed. Because you know what? You're a young woman spitting this game out. I'm 58 years old. And I dig everything you're saying. So you take care. And like the sister said, we want you to always be protective around your space and be careful. Yes, ma'am. Because they don't like truth tellers. Yes, ma'am. So may God bless and keep you, sugar. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right, y'all. I have enjoyed tonight's show. I have enjoyed. I have enjoyed everybody that called in. I have enjoyed all of the people that come from TikTok to support me here on YouTube. Make sure I got a chance. By the way, my cash app is not right in my um, description. That's my old cash app. And I would have still had access to it, but I don't have access to it anymore because I had to disconnect the phone number to it to add it to my new cash app. So the only cash app, I'm going to go in there and change it, but the only cash app that is correct is the one that I put on the screen. All right. I cannot access that one that is in my bio. I got to change it because it's static. So every time I start a new show, all of that information just automatically uploads. I got to go in there and figure out how to change it okay so um make sure that we uh give to princella c the cash app make sure you go to princella the queen maker.com put yourself on the wait list for the uh five components of love i'm working on a training the 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 live training that i do on TikTok, I'm turning that into a workshop, a paid workshop. We're gonna be. Oh, I'm doing a book club. I'm putting a book club book club together, and we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of other stuff because what I'm doing is true empowerment. It ain't it ain't cliche shit, right? It is not cliche shit. It's real shit, right? So um, you want to get over there if you have the book. Make sure you get the workbook and the course uh, because I am putting. The power, I'm putting women back into their divine position that they was meant to be in. And I know how to do that. All right. So thank y'all again. I have enjoyed this show. And we're going to call it a night. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace. Oh, wait a minute. Tomorrow. That's right. We got, we got somebody coming in tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. Debate night. I don't know how this is going to turn out. But we'll see how it turn out. Tomorrow, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, be here because it's going down. Now, y'all have a good night. Peace. <laughs>